Welcome to Sad Boys, a podcast about feelings and other things also. I'm Jarvis. I'm Jordan. And today we're joined by South Dakota's finest. You may know him as a gamer, a, a video essayist on an exercise ball. A yoga ball style gamer. A, a musician. A beautiful, I don't even know what you'd call it, like hip hop uh, icon. Uh, hip hop oh music God. icon. <laughs> what the hell? Clean um, up. Jakey, Nakey Jakey is here Hello. joining us today. Hello. Thank Jakey, you. Jakey, Thank Jakey, you for Jakey, having Jakey, me. Jakey. 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 Uh, you, gotta have, you gotta go, man. I'm happy to be here, but I will go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All and right. That's been the show. Thanks. <laughs> We're going to do another hour and a half of that. <laughs> Thanks so much for joining us, man. Thanks for having me. How the hell are you? I'm good. Like I, we were talking about a little bit before this, I'm like a little sleep deprived and oh yeah, f- mode from editing. You are in the thick of it right now. I'm in the thicky. You've got a video coming out tomorrow. Lemony thicket. You're Come in on. lemony thicket <laughs> because you're in a series of unfortunate <laughs> events. <laughs> That's right. Videos. Uh, <laughs> unfortunate videos. <laughs> if, if series of unfortunate <clears throat> edits. A series of unfortunate green screen edits yeah. <laughs> where I'm like holding swords and guns. <laughs> <laughs> How does it? Okay. Do you <clears throat> suffer from? This happens to a mental lot of illness. A yes. lot of us. That yes. would be a very, very funny transition point. <laughs> 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 do you suffer from mental illness? Yeah. Do you suffer? Yeah. Is it running your family? Or have, you? Yeah. Have you or a friend been affected by? Okay. Let me see a picture of your dad. What's going on there? Because I've got an image in my head. There's this thing that happens in like this happened in like the corporate world when you're like doing pro, making a project. Maybe it's like a you're working on Patreon, the website. You're working on a new feature, mm-hmm. or in this case, a video. You have the idea for the video, but as you're working on it you get new ideas that add more and more work and it's called scope creep, Mm -hmm. you know, in, in like the production world, but like, um, or in the, the corporate world, but the, I feel like as creators, we can fall in love with so many ideas during the process of you production. You are exactly describing what keeps happening with this yeah. fucking... <laughs> it, it, you described all the swords and shit and I was like, I know what this uh, sounds no, like. No, the, the prime example is like, like two that I feel like I just did is one. It's like, I'm talking about in dark souls, like, Oh, you rest at a bonfire. And when you do, you get your Estus back and all the enemies respawn. And I'm like, I guess I could cut to footage of enemies respawning, but you don't see them respawn. And I'm like, Oh, that's fine. And then as it goes on, I'm like, wait, I have this B roll of a bunch of takes of me going, I'll kill you. And so I like made it red and had him hold a sword. And so when I say the enemies spawn, it's another me that comes out towards me going, I'll kill you. And it's like, that took like fucking 30 minutes. I <laughs> premieres just, a two second bit. And it's, it's like, just like, oh, good, more rendering. Sick. Okay. No, Thanks, man. I kind of miss, I, I like recently haven't, um, just like there's been a lot going on and like with Creator Clash and moving and all that shit. Um, but I want to get back to like, you had time. Really oh. loose. I know, dude, Lazy. for real. It, I, these are excuses. But the, um, the feeling of like, oh, I'm going to spend a lot of time on like a five second bit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, but uh, before we get too ahead of ourselves, the video that you're working on that should be out as of mm-hmm. the release of this um, comment, right? As of subscribe. this podcast is about FromSoft. That's right. Do you want to give us a little bit of a background? Give the audience a little bit of a background? Uh, yeah. It is From Software's Game Design Changed Everything, mm. is the title. And it's like people that have seen my channel will know from that title phrasing it's it's in the same spirit or yeah. series as the naughty dog video or the yeah Rockstar you're video. like this shit you're like I, i'm on an exercise ball and some shit in gaming is cool or it needs to change <laughs> or it needs to, <laughs> that's how i should open it yeah. instead, of, instead of some thesis it's just like look some stuff Makes me go, ah. Yeah. What's some going on, guys? Go, Stuff that makes me go, ah. Oh. Yo, Kojima is good or bad. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. <laughs> yeah, it's like, like a Good Mythical Morning episode. <laughs> no, I was going to say, that sounded like 2012 era, like, yeah. IGN Let's get in. excerpts or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> what was that review? What's of- going on, gamers? And then, like, <laughs> the yeah. title f- flies out. It's like a, a an After Effects plugin. And then I'm having to clean up because I'm peeing and... That's a because you're excited because so you're peeing from yeah. excitement. Yeah. Like a, you can just like cut that out. Like I feel like. piddling. Yeah, <laughs> you're just like jumping around. Well, you got the zoomies. <laughs> My um, mom hears me in the computer room, just <laughs> <laughs> slamming against the wall. Oh, you must be zooming. recording. <laughs> uh, before I forget, I want to shout out the uh, the hoodie that I'm wearing today. Um, it was sent to me, and and I just want to like help out a friend. Um, 
the friend is Cutie Pie Sensei. So this is a, a company that she co-founded called Furaware. And it's like pop culture inspired like swimwear and like hoodies and stuff, comfort wear. This hoodie is extremely comfortable. I feel like I look like an anime protagonist. The or, leather bits are... They, yeah, they I'm super out. into it. I'm yeah. super into it. And uh, yeah, just wanted to help out somebody I've known since uh, we met when I was doing an overnight in high school at Georgia Tech. I like committed to go to college there. And then I was like, oh, I should probably go to the campus and like see what it's like, you know, after I've already committed. Did you guys both graduate from college? Did we finish college? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I guess I should have led with, did you go to college? <laughs> <laughs> no, I graduated. I did not Yeah, go. I did not go, but I did get the degree. <laughs> Couldn't it's a really weird. It. It's a weird way of asking. I graduated yeah. in a day. <laughs> uh, yeah, I did. I didn't finish high school, though. Mm -hmm. I mixed it up a little bit. I finished high school, didn't finish what? college. What did you do at college? I went for like two weeks and realized I couldn't afford it, but also that I just didn't really want to go. I was majoring yeah. in psychology, which oh, is okay. a given that I didn't know what. The yeah. hell. There's no offense to anyone that's majoring in psychology. I Props to my psychiatrist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bro, honestly, I don't respect anybody who does that bullshit my career path. My psychiatrist is watching this episode. Yeah, she's like, <laughs> what? <laughs> no, I need a psychiatrist. Dude, yeah, <laughs> being so mean that they have to go to therapy. Yeah. yeah. No, just like, <laughs> they go to the mirror. <laughs> It would so be, what's going on? It'd be funny during. Hey, hey, what's hey, going hey, on? Wait, I'm talking. <laughs> hey, you're supposed to be listening to me. Venmoing themselves five hundred dollars. <laughs> oh my god, real. that's I. I do Venmo my therapist. Yeah, I Venmo my therapist. Too. Yeah, yeah, what's that about? That feels a little. Venmo is the domain of paying. Uh, therapists and drug dealers. That yeah, is in, all in, in, a, in a way, there's a Venn diagram. He is sure. a drug. And it's a, a drug a, of words. Go on. Okay. And elaborate. And a, yeah, a drug of ideas <laughs> and a drug of the mind. It's high. Sort of a gateway drug to your own fucking Thoughts. ass. Yeah, dude. And you dude. swallow the pill of knowledge, of <laughs> self-knowledge. There we go. And remember, swallow guys, don't forget to pick up ape juice supplement <laughs> to boost your freaking balls in your head. Gamercum.gg. <laughs> <laughs> it's got the perfect amount of taurine and dude, caffeine. Gamercum would have like a... Uh, like a crunchy texture. <laughs> <It'd be so laughs> oh, dude, it, it's never new. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's, I, uh, I straight up for a while have wanted to. I've never thought of the right context to do it, but to bury too much time and money into a fake April Fool's project called Gamer Milk is dude, very funny I, to me. I, I'm with you. I think about April, and then I never do it, but yeah. I think about like, oh, next April Fool's, we'll all like make our thumbnails look like Jarvis's and upload on the same day or some yeah. shit like yeah, that. And yeah. then never, it's never exactly I, the same as just a shower argument. I love, <laughs> and I would have said this and, and Einstein yeah, would have applauded. You're playing it. If yeah. Gamercom would have taken you're off like, <laughs> and I would be rich, but <laughs> I would get to have sex one time. April Fool's is a funny thing because it, it's, I think in my old age, I've started to hate it. It's been like, Oh, I can't take the internet seriously today. Yeah. Or it, different, like specifically with gaming, there's always like game announcements that you're like, damn, this actually looks kind of yeah, cool, but I don't know if good. it's real. It has They're like, definitely drifted into the region of market research. Like uh, the yeah. death of Sonic the Hedgehog. We have a, a friend that was attached to that. Yeah. The, yeah. the what of Sonic? It was an indie, well, indie scale game like, release, but yeah, first party like murder mystery. actually from Sega. Oh. In I the kind I of vein of Overboard. About. It was, yeah. apparently it was great. Point and click, looks really cute, well written, funny, whatever. I do know what you're talking about, yeah. But that was an April Fool's release that just, you know, did extremely well and was beloved. Yeah. So how much of a joke is that even? Yeah, right. exactly. Or like, I, I remember like Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon. Yeah. That mm. is awesome, but it's it was like a spinoff, its own game that had like a super satirical, like over the top '80s tone. It's like oh. one of the best Far Cry games, but it was it's great. I think it was announced on April Fools, but it was like, no, this has been in development, and it ended up being amazing. And so I, it's like, oh, but it's I really think, short because it was just like a, we don't want to take too much of a risk on a synthwave it, Robocop, right? But it's like for those types of games. This is getting in a tangent. It. It's one I would replay because they give you most of the abilities right from the start and mm -hmm. it doesn't overstay its welcome. Like you said, it's really short. The and it's like, those great. games don't, games are too long. Controversial oh, take. Games are, are too way long. too big. However, and long. Uh, I will say I am like 
50, 60 hours into Tears of the Kingdom, I'm like, I was taking my sweet time. Yeah, there's an asterisk next to what I said because I just made a video about Elden Ring being like, it's 200 hours and they're all amazing. Yeah. <laughs> no, well, that's no, no. Yeah, I mean, if you, if you <laughs> call your shot, you know what I mean? If you're like going to Babe Ruth, you better get the home run. If you're going exactly. to Bay, like, right. our game is 1,700 hours long right. and is you'll die before it's done. That's, then it needs to be perfect. That's what I feel yeah. about Tears of the Kingdom being like, it's $70. I know it's a Switch game. I know it essentially runs yeah. on fucking a Wrights Brother-esque like, <laughs> <laughs> degree of technology. Dude, Switch is a launch Switch and as I've been playing it, it's made sounds I have never heard it make. Kill like, me! Like fans, yeah. fans turn on that I didn't even know know we're in there. Yeah, my <laughs> Switch, it feels like a TI-84 silver edition. It feels like my Switch is one of the devices that's being, like, fucked with in the game. It's like, yeah. you shouldn't be doing this right now. But, uh, it's like a Sheikah Slate. <laughs> they, they did, uh, I have a fun fact about that. Um, but, uh, so yeah, they, they made the game $70 and everybody was like, come on. But then it came out and they were like, okay, maybe it's worth a hundred dollars yeah. actually. No, Bec I, I genuinely think the game is incredible. Um, sure, it's got switch problems, like performance issues sometimes, but who doesn't? But yeah, who doesn't? Yeah. Sometimes we can't perform. I <laughs> thought, Sex, yeah. like, I've <laughs> been avoiding spoilers. <laughs> Me and too. The cause... amount of surprises that I I thought that there's no way that everybody on the internet was like respectful enough to keep some of this stuff close to the chest. But they have been. But they have, and I won't say anything here because I've I've only played it a smidgen because of working on this video for the past yeah. like month yeah. so much, but, but I, that's exactly like now that, but it's wow, like yeah. I'm 60 hours in and last night I was up till 2 AM cause I couldn't believe what was happening. I was like, no way for real. I had no Damn. clue. That's, and that, was, that was like Elden ring that it yeah. was like, it just kept going and going and going. And it's yeah. like, that's when, that's when I'm with you that it's like, I remember for, uh, speaking of like 2010 IGN stuff, yeah. I remember <clears throat> the uh, GTA 4 review on IGN. Mm. And I remember a quote that stuck with me because it, it's like the games that are like, like everything is just $60 as like a flat, like I think Dunkey has a really great video talking about pricing and how some games are actually worth more. And I remember in the IGN review, he says like, this is not only worth $60, like I would have paid $200 for this <laughs> game for the amount of like experience that was yeah. amazing I got out of it. And it's like, Really, it's like fucking FromSoft, Rockstar, Nintendo, like it, those yeah. those studios are like Naughty Dog that put out games sure. that you're like, okay, this was worth every penny and right. more. Well, that's the dilemma, and then right? Because like first party, <laughs> yeah, then there's Gollum. First party productions that have hundreds of millions of dollars behind them are almost obliged now to deliver a certain level of quality for a certain number of hours mm -hmm. to the point where like, I mean, the thing that's embarrassing about the latter Assassin's Creed games is that they have obscene budgets. They're way too long, but they're also bad. Most of them are bad for most is of the time. Is it like a Call of Duty thing with Assassin's Creed where they swap studios every... I think so. I, it, it, People they're, in the team, yes, yeah. company and developers. Okay. I the think same. because Origins and Odyssey which I actually played a lot of Odyssey and there were some cool aspects to it, but I know that they they were developed like concurrently, but I think different teams, kind of like a Dark Souls 2 and Bloodborne, because sorry, my head is just so fucking- No, dude, I- It was the same with like Black Flag and uh, Assassin's Creed 3. Where it's like there's sense. they're developed kind of concurrently and it's the same studio, but different teams. But Ubisoft is also different because it's like fucking- so many teams all over the world. Yeah. It's like, I couldn't with tell no you. Oversight. But I, yeah. I think I remember when I looked up with Origins and Odyssey that they were kind of developed concurrently because they, mm. they came out like bang, bang, and they're both fucking huge. So it's yeah, like, yeah. there's no way you did one and then immediately rushed. You yeah. know what I mean? I'm curious about your guys' is, is thoughts on this, right? Like, I love and have always loved games criticism and critique and uh, just thinking about and investigating mechanics. It's just, it's fascinating, right? I am always so conflicted about the purpose of games reviews, mm -hmm. like embargo goes up, game review released, and the emphasis they have to place because they're uh, consumer marketed. Yeah. The emphasis they have to place on value for, because that is like, that, that archives very badly. Mm -hmm. If I now read a review of like a PS3 launch title and it's, well, but the PS3 costs this much. Mm -hmm. 
okay, but that's basically completely unrelated to whether or not like I Genshi know, is any good, right? It's it's. I'm totally with you that there's like, I, it's still there's so many reviewers that 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 the bottom line kind of is like this is okay, but it's not worth this price or yeah. whatever. Like mm -hmm. different reviewers do it differently, but I'm with you because it's like someone like me. I have the luxury where I do this for a job. So yeah. the price isn't really a factor. I mean, I write it off because like it, it, it I mean, it's, it's you it's, have to, it's a, it's, it's baked into the job. So I, you know, like new destiny expansion comes out and I play it, whether it's as a write off or just because I want to play it, it's so much easier of a pill to swallow that a whole ass lightfall expansion. That's pretty mid is 50 bucks. And yeah. it's like, I, you know, I get it because it's like, yeah, I want to check it out. But then it's like, I think back to, not that long ago when I could like barely afford shit when my YouTube was first starting out. It's like, yeah. I never would have bought that. So mm -hmm. I have to, I have to right. remember that. I you think know? That, like, like, I think that as long as it's not, as long as it's not like the guiding, the guiding principle of the review for me, I do think that it's valuable to consider value because a lot of people don't have a lot of, like most people do not have a lot of discretionary spending to spend on games or all the time or the time. And so like when I was younger, getting a game that was like really long was like super valuable to me. Oh, it was going to be the game. That's, it was going to be that's, the game. That's what like Ubisoft I think is banking on, right? Of that. Yeah. That's why they think it's attractive to have that like hundreds, hundreds of hours because people will see that and be like, well, I could get Pokemon Snap and I'll play it for eight hours or I could yeah. get Assassin's Creed Ezio Trilogy. That's a that. great example too because I played Pokemon Snap uh, all the way through on stream and it isn't a long game, the new one. And I thought it was gorgeous. And the the value to me of being able to literally just be in a world on a fucking, uh, uh, on, a, on, a tra on rails and then I go, ooh, Oh, there's a, there's a guy. There's like, mm -hmm. Oh, there. And there's another guy. Ooh, this, and like that, like my, my dopamine's firing and right. firing and firing for like six hours, eight hours. And but, we all, but we, you know, we all know our share of Disney adults, right? Yeah. Money into time experienced at the park is, is it's not a great one to one, but it's no. a memory and a sentiment to hold on to. Yeah. It's, it's like a, I think that's a, <clears throat> I think I was definitely guilty of when I was, getting into like high school and starting to like think more critically about games and stuff that I think that I was a bit more glued to like Metacritic or just like, mm -hmm. Oh, what did critics think of this game before I try it? Right. And I think I slowly realized a lot of the times what would generally be considered like a seven or eight out of 10, like, you know, like a max pain or something yeah, was like a 10 out of 10 for me personally, just because it, it was a niche thing that specifically appealed to yeah. me. And it's yeah. like, like, I, again, going back to like, this is this game I would have paid $100 or $200 for. It's like, yeah, there's a lot of games that I think back on. And even when I was like, you know, could barely afford games, it's like, no, that still would have been worth like the experience that I got out of it. Are there games that you adore that reviewed extremely poorly? I have one that actually maybe is semi-related, not super poorly, but relative to the expectations. Mm -hmm. Max Payne 3. Dude, oh my god! I think it's 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 the good version of Kane Lynch too, <laughs> dude. Like I was actually about to go into that specifically being an example that like, in terms of playtime, you can get out of it. It's not super long, and unless you're playing the PC version with a mod that lets you skip cutscenes, yeah. you can't skip the cutscenes because they're masking the loading screens. They're really not a lot of the time, which is kind of bullshit. At well, least on it's PC. also just not optimized for PC. So it's yeah. like, right, we can't but, let you skip this yeah, <laughs> 720p I, presentation. Even when I was playing it on the 360, where you had to watch all the cutscenes every time you replayed a level or whatever, I was so just like enamored with the... Uh, soundtrack and the gameplay and everything which by dude. the way dude i fucking met uh from health from health johnny it was him it was i was him. going crazy no I, dude because i it was, was late to that party so i wasn't how the fuck do i go up and uh, no know? it was it, the second he walked in i was like i'm pretty sure i know that guy like oh, well, not personally I, I guess for uh listeners viewers uh sad folk we should, uh, for context, sad, Max Payne 3 has, sad <laughs> as of this very moment, <laughs> emotional perverts was, was the default. Uh, Max Payne 3 features, in my opinion, 
Uh, oh man, it's it's my most listened to OST ever. I didn't know this about you. I like, obviously we're all already pals, but I'm like, damn, I it is with Max Payne three, and this was something that when I talked with Johnny, so this was like, this goes in the story goes into it that it was one of the coolest like having not you know made YouTube videos or made music or anything, and then meeting someone that again health isn't the biggest band. But I go up to him and he's talking with Billy and Chrissy. I think that they were already talking. And I go up and I like I put my hand out and I was like, "Hey, Johnny!" Like I'm, and he like turns to me and he's like, "You're Jake." And I'm like, "Oh, that's no sick. fucking way." He's like, "You, I know you. You made that fucking rock star video, yeah, blah blah." I sent that to some of my friends that like work there, and I'm like, "What?" And he's like, "Yeah, dude, your shit's fucking great." And I'm like, and the like a lot of the rest of the night that I dude, was there, so a couple sick. hours. He's such a sweet dude. He like told me different cool places to go here, but he. And he's uh, also like a huge creative drive for health, right? Yeah, like and he, he I talked he's about- He's definitely the bassist, but he's also the songwriter or like one of- Yeah, and he, he I was specifically telling him that their Twitter, they upload so many shit post memes in their Discord apparently is just hilarious and amazing. But he, hearing him like uh, say different anecdotes about how they made the soundtrack or mm -hmm. X, Y, Z and like talking about different people with Rockstar and whatever was like so- I don't know. It was it was awesome. I mean, because specifically to me, I replayed that game so many times and the soundtrack is so perfect. And I specifically told him, I was like, dude, the song in Panama with like the drum machine and this. And he's like, oh yeah, for that, we did this and this. And it was like, that's so cool. To me, that game was worth like $100. Dude, doom, 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 doom. Bow, bow, he, he, bow, shout out, bow. shout out to him. If he, Can if I he ask, sees this. okay, so this is a question uh, that I, I feel like I should have asked earlier. What e type of game is Max Payne? Because it's a it's a series that I have it's, it's, heard of for so long that I've never learned anything about. It's third person. It was the first one was like one of the earliest, I think, third person shooters mm -hmm. on PC. PC it came out in like two thousand. Because I was gonna say like I used to go to a cyber cafe, like a gaming cafe in my hometown, college town. And because I didn't have like a gaming PC. And so me and when I was in middle school, we would go and we'd play like, um, you know, source engine games and shit like that. People in my town would go to the library to play RuneScape because the yeah, computers weren't Star that Wars, great. Star Wars Battlefront. We, we would all meet up Battle at the library to, to as every single day. And we failed for my entire time at high school to try and play the Matrix online. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and it never worked once ever at all. And then I remember like Serious Sam was a, mm. a, a a game around that time. And then I remembered Max Payne was another game on PC that I just never learned anything about. So it's a third person shooter. Yeah. So it it's super uh, inspired by not only like Matrix, but like mm. what inspired the Matrix, which is, is it John Woo? So yeah, John Woo, like, like uh, Hong Kong action movies, mm -hmm, like hard boiled and stuff. Mm, where it's cool. it's super like it it was. I think I'm kind of talking out of my ass, but I think as far as like a shooter or like combat was one of the first games to use like slow motion or like bullet time. Oh, yeah, cool. that's because the loop a, is like a, combat encounter, mm -hmm. go in two guns equipped, slow mo jump. Go slow. I love me some bullet time because you can manually activate bullet time and it like drains your thing really fast. But what you can always do is press a button and you jump sideways in slow mo, and that never runs out. Like you can mm. always do that. So a lot of the gameplay loop is just like going into rooms or situations where if you tried to do it without slow mo, you'd probably die pretty quickly, especially in Max Payne Three because mm -hmm. they like ramped it up. But uh and it, it's also just like neo noir. Like a big appeal of yeah. it is that it's like he has like the voiceover and the writing and there's like comic book well, panels and he's like emphasis, yeah. The rain series. The, say what? No. Is it an active series or did it I mean, no not the, that we know of. Relative to like game sales, Max Payne one sold really well. Max Payne two didn't sell as well, but it's like amazing. And it was online. on PS2, so it got more mm -hmm. right. at least. It did. Max Payne 2 didn't sell like amazing. And so Rockstar published the first two on consoles. And then the third one is just made by Rockstar, but the first two were made by Remedy, the people that made Alan Wake and okay. Control and- Quantum um, Break. <laughs> Quantum Break, yeah. Everyone's favorite. Uh, for, for, the, for the Remedy heads out there. Um, but- uh, Sam Lake's Quantum Wake. Matt, Rockstar made Max Payne 3, and it's like other than uh, like, you know, GTA and Red Dead, like other than 
Max Payne. There's they don't that was like the last like linear story game that they made that wasn't an mm-hmm. open world game. Like since then they've I'm pretty sure they've only made either GTA or Red Dead for yeah, the most part. That's one of the special things Bully. about it is it's mm-hmm. between GTA four and GTA five mm-hmm. is this and, completely linear project. And it clearly like informed a lot of the like gunplay yeah. in mm-hmm. GTA five. But it sucks compared to Max Payne. Like oh, rocks. That's like, why we're so disappointed. Red Dead or GTA Five both feel. Red Dead Two has its like own feel and it's fine. I actually kind of like it. But GTA Five after Max Payne Three felt like a lot of steps backwards in terms of like the physics and like yeah. the the responsiveness and like well, mm. fidelity is such a focus in Max Payne Three, kind of to its own detriment. Like the game is like the loading screens. The, and shit, the yeah. loading screens. The fo- it still looks amazing. The art direction no, is looks really good. Like every bullet is rendered. So like oh, when you go in slow motion, it's like you can see the bullets enter and leave bodies. Oh, and that's like, crazy! It's fucking awesome. Literally, I would just before the end of any firefight when I was replaying it in college, I would pause. And I would deliberately be killed or just pause and reset to checkpoint so that I could go back through again. And And every second play through, (laughs) if you pause, you can still move the camera and just like kind of like a photo mode before photo modes. Mm -hmm. And you can just individually look at the bullets as the sound waves ripple behind them. It's like, oh, that's so cool. It's a level of focus that like, to be fair, some resource probably could have gone towards improving other things about the game. Yeah, But the complaints were, and this is, I stop rambling about Max Payne. <laughs> uh, no, I mean this um, could just become the Max Payne podcast. I mean, hey, I'm, I'm <laughs> extremely <laughs> painful. Yeah, uh, but they're pain. So I shot this one rat in slow motion. There's rats in the first game. Uh, it's in New York. You can oh, shoot yeah. them, and they go. <laughs> oh well, I mean that's one of the things people didn't like, and it's a, kind of a shame. It feels like they were being disincentivized to experiment. They, people were like, "It's in Brazil, mm-hmm. but that's not where Max Payne takes place. I, that's against the rules." I I think it's one of the most fascinating sequels. I love it i think that as far as like nothing else a different person handling an ip that's beloved and taking it in a new direction while also staying pretty true to it i think this is rockstar's first mm -hmm. take on it and it's written by uh uh dan hauser Hauser? who he wrote red dead 2 which Mm -hmm. i think is like his opus like flaws aside red dead 2 is such an amazing story and the writing and everything but he was the main writer and he wrote max paint 3 and like relative to other game companies max Payne 3 sold fine like i think it 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 probably made back its budget but as far as rockstar numbers it was nothing compared to which is why it's like why would they ever revisit it right it's like that and ping pong tournament game whatever oh whatever dude i love i thought about making a video on table tennis because i think it that's works. such a fascinating game but it's it's such a cool thing to see a team that usually doesn't get to do something like that, do something like that. Right. But it's like, you have to know that there's people at rockstar that are tired of like, all right, let's not make another fucking GTA. Let's make like a space sim or right, something, right, you know, right. but um, yeah, I mean, that's I, probably a weird, I mean, I'm, yeah. it's the case with everybody that does creative stuff. I'm sure you, maybe we can all relate in different ways when there's not just an audio, uh, an audience expectation, but also a skill set almost like great power, great responsibility issue of, Mm -hmm. well, I know what I'm good at and I know I can deliver something that I'll be satisfied with and that people will like. But boy, I mean, like somebody at Rockstar would have played Dishonored 2 and been like, wow, I'd love to teleport. I'd love for a blink to be in my game, but there's just no way I, at my level, at the salary I have at Rockstar and the the right. resources I have, will they let me put like a Hadouken in this <laughs> game? <laughs> so do what? I experiment with a GTA new type 6, of video? You could just do Street Fighter moves. <laughs> First, <laughs> <it's what laughs> First, I mean that's kind of. I, I don't want to go on this tangent, but that's kind of an interesting thing about Smash with uh, the like Street Fighter characters and yeah. stuff yeah. that they where they had alternate. Uh, control schemes that if you like that were inspired by those games and yeah they, that it's like it your muscle because i played a lot of street fighter 2 on the super nintendo yeah. and it's like your muscle memory you can do the same gestures yeah. in smash and, and that work and his animations and it's like how the fuck yeah. is maybe frame advantage or something you get something there, you get something you, you get, get a benefit if, if you do the if inputs, you are yeah. like playing like that you do get some access to stuff that you don't you get you know, top but oh wow, that's, the, um, that's you get a children's shot- game, man. You get, <laughs> like, you get shotgun. Um, I wanted to ask, like, so this is tying back to FromSoft, and I'm like kind of a FromSoft noob. The first FromSoft game I played was Elden Ring. Yeah, but then um, in in talking about difference in uh, 
setting in in type of game Elden Ring has this like fantasy setting or yeah I guess you, yeah, you say yeah. that and then um you know I at the at, at the game awards they did the trailer for I want to say Armored Core is that mm -hmm. the other one Armored Core like six mm -hmm. or something and I was like I had no idea FromSoft was even in this like genre of this like mech like sort of cyberpunky type dude it, it it would kind of be the equivalent is kind of like if Naughty Dog came out and was like, we're doing another Jack and Daxter. Like yeah, after yeah. doing Uncharted and Last of Us for so yeah, long. Yeah, like, yeah. And that's, I, so my sister's boyfriend, who's also named Jake, shout out Jacobs. Um, he's was huge he in tall armor guy? core. Uh, no, 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 no. Is he no, the no. Yoga Bowl game? <laughs> no, I don't think I've met. I, I, I was I, like, I don't, I don't think you would have met him. <laughs> no, I mean, me and Jake go way back. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I've got a okay. lot of friends. Jake the Snake. <laughs> <laughs> Jake the rake, <laughs> clean of the floor. He's always gardening. <laughs> Please, no. um, he's a tall guy that's always gardening. He is a huge FromSoft fan, specifically Bloodborne. We mm. like we we mm. share that. We we always talk about FromSoft, but he actually played the fuck out of the Armored Core series before. Mm. So he he's been invested, and he's told me that it's so exciting and fascinating because it's like. Are they going to just do what they did before? Is it going to be influenced by stuff that they've done with the Souls series? How would you even implement that? Because it's a completely different genre. Yeah, and what it's genre like, is Armor Core? It's like a mech fighting game. Okay. Where Zone of the Enders kind of, you have played that? Uh, I've heard of it's it. A, it's yeah. a deep cut, Kojima deep cut. So um, the reason I, <laughs> I asked that is because now tying it back to like Tears of the Kingdom, which is on my mind just because I've been playing it so much. The, she tears on my she tears on my kingdom um, till I n came. What, yeah, what did I? Yeah, you just can't think of anything. Oh yeah, I remember. Yeah, we were no, we, that's what we I was were at dinner. We were like, at dinner, and I said something. She gave she she gave oh, my, my king dome till he <laughs> tears. Yeah, yeah, that's what I, I, I just tweeted it. Till I, teared. I saw that you. I saw he tweeted. Yeah, it. yeah. Um, but the uh, she gave my king dome. The type of <laughs> my leash. <laughs> this is definitely like the gaming episode. We front loaded this with so much gaming, but I guess if people are coming in for Jakey, they're gonna. I was gonna say, yeah, that's that's my. They're gonna that's, get that's some, my, some my bread and boys, my bread and buddy. But um, the style of you know Breath of the Wild transformed a lot from the Zelda uh, formula. Mm -hmm. So like the you know uh, the. Because Breath of the Wild is meant to be a reimagining of Zelda One, yeah. which is like this. Oh, it's an NES game, but it's like a open world type vibe. It's like, what if we could do that again, but like with all the technology that we have now? And it's not this more. Um, I don't want to say linear, but more linear. Uh, you know, do do the temples, and it's focused more on the puzzles. Uh, it, I mean, obviously it is focused on the puzzles, but the open world exploration is such a big piece and the combat mm -hmm. being so, um, what's the word robust, I think than mm -hmm. some of the other, some of the other games where there's just so much tech and mm -hmm. there's so much like, feels a bit from soft inspired too. With oh, that. Yeah. You can, like, you can like parry from soft. Yeah, yeah. Because I, I had never played Elden Ring, but then I played breath of the wild or Elden Ring hadn't come out yet. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I played breath of the wild late and I my like training wheels for getting excited about Elden Ring was that I played Breath of the Wild on Master Mode and you fought and, like, a Lionel. And three, <laughs> I, I played with three hearts or whatever, mm -hmm. and like I didn't get any additional hearts. And then I just like all of the bosses and stuff. I was just like learning their patterns and just like pairing everything or flirting. Would you everything. like make food to give you the extra like yellow hearts? No, because that oh wow. no, it you was like I would up. do it like if I got hit, I died. Damn. And then I would just over and then and then now in Tears of the Kingdom, it's like I can farm lion those like the back of my hand because I all the timings are the same for the previous mm -hmm. game. So I'm just like going to town. And it's great for me because uh they drop really good stuff. But the reason I brought that up is because like it is a complete shift in like genre. Mm -hmm. But but it is and a, a lot of people were pissed yeah with breath of the wild i think a lot yeah. of the people were like i want traditional temples back and then people like me were like wow i want to play a zelda game for the first time and no yeah because yeah. i think about i i'm like as much as i like <clears throat> the older zelda games like i would say majora's mask is still my favorite mm -hmm. um the such a neat game it's such a neat game and such an interesting story and just like the re the, it reminds me a lot of uh tears of the kingdom because it's the same engine, like like Majora's Mask is 
like they turned around a game. It's like a almost like a Smash Brothers melee story where they turned around the game in like a uh, a year and a half or something I, no, crazy. I, I, th- I think that's right. Yeah. yeah, and and in 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 doing so, they u- reused a lot of resources. It's almost like they were in like a magic draft tournament or something. And they were like, okay, we have all of these like raw ingredients mm. from Ocarina of Time. How can we make something that's not a super sprawling open world because the world is like smaller. Um, but how can we conserve the resources? Oh, everything is on this like three day time cycle. Uh, there's so many, like there's just thing upon thing. That's like, yeah. Was so the best way to say it is Nintendo of them to be like, we're going to make this work because narratively it's going to be this parallel world. And also we're going to reuse the assets because it makes sense with the three day cycle because we can't make everything. Yeah. And there's so many things like that where it's like it feel, and it's also darker, which I like a lot. That's what I was going to mention. It's what can we express in every part that we haven't before? Let's make the soundtrack just a little bit more. Let's evoke something a little different. It is a scary game. It's It's so fun. It's really scary. Like like for people. Nightmares, right? Yeah. I couldn't play the game a Alone. I had to invite my like specifically the ending over when you to play with me when you uh I mean I guess spoilers if you you know don't listen for the next 10 seconds yeah. but when you go to the moon to fight him and he like the mask becomes I remember watching my older brother play that and like the whole vibe of the moon and it feels like heaven and you're talking to these different mask mm-hmm. kids and yeah. stuff I was like this is scary it's what cosmic is, horror is not appropriate yeah, for a child there's yeah. like it's like body horror or something where it's like what is the term for like grotesque like yeah like body- I, yeah, body. because that, that kind of Junjito that, that is like very spooky prevalent <laughs> now in in Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom. There's a lot of that, and it's like genuinely like unnerving some of the stuff. But what I was gonna say was, um, Tears of the Kingdom feels like Majora's Mask in a way because it is reuse. The game took what five six years to develop. Mm-hmm. The game is quote unquote reusing a lot of stuff, but really. It's building on an engine. Yeah, I've played it for like five hours and I can already tell like, no, they they just, they they kept it and did more. <laughs> like, right, it is, yeah. people, the people who, the, there's a early critique from people who did not play the game who were like, they just reused 80% of the map. And I'm, this that's is like- mad in 2023, it's the same. No, that's like the people who go, I can't believe the new Spider-Man is also in New York yeah. or whatever. <laughs> like, why can't he go to space? Yeah, why can't he go to Brazil? <laughs> um, and narrative, why Spider-Man? <laughs> narratively, it would not make sense for him to go to another city too well, he's as cool also, as it would be of like spider-man in tokyo like that'd be awesome but like yeah. uh, it, the craven's hunt to him <laughs> where he like lives that's yeah. the point but yeah i like if I craven was, went to new zealand to hunt a tiger <laughs> like, like oh, that's the fuck he's not here oh weird but uh but basically like without going into too much spoilers what they do is such an escalation and such a um what's the word like it's so it's it's just better. It's like mm. it's like we thought like Breath of the Wild was like you you can't go up from here, but now it's like how how do you I don't know like I genuinely can't fathom that it's possible to like improve like, upon this. I feel like you have to go laterally from here. Mm-hmm. But then on top of that, like Zelda's never been one for story. Like the story is super convoluted and it's kind of like the dialogue's not super strong. It's not like the voice the acting game. is voice acting still, is, is whatever. Yeah. Shout out to Matthew Mercer though. Right. Um but then uh I was watching like last night I fell asleep to like a lore of like Oh, I've done uh, that. I was I was I was watching <laughs> a video. <laughs> I was watching a video about the timeline of Zelda timelines because mm-hmm. they've retconned so much. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, like with the, uh, this is where Link loses and this is where- Yeah, the three timelines spawn. Four swords only takes this place. is where he lost, but he was a kid and this is- Yeah, exactly, lost, exactly, yeah. exactly. <laughs> Here's what a fucking loser he is in <laughs> every <laughs> timeline. And one of my favorite game, tra- I don't know if you guys remember game trailers. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, dude. But the, like the game uh, trailers timeline video, Zelda. Who was the- The, the guy, the, the voice. voice. Brandon. Easy allies. Brandon. Brandon. The, Brandon. The most excited- uh, I've ever been for a Patreon project. They got in touch with us. I got to speak to him. Dude, I was like 22. The Hell most buttery yeah. voice, dude. He can narrate anything, but he's he's the man. But uh Top watching 10. that video, <laughs> I realized how um much Tears of the Kingdom actually calls back to the lore of like the OG Zelda games and even Ocarina of Time because I had like forgotten so much of it because it's like so forgettable, like mm-hmm. in a way. And I just like I was like, wow, this is even more beautiful than I like I appreciated it even more. 
It, um, I mean, the series thrives on vibes, right? It does like thrive on vibes. For a series that I don't, no matter how big a fan you are, without resorting to graphs, it is impossible to tell a compelling story yeah. about the broader Zelda narrative. But there's no uh, concert in the world that makes more people cry than live Zelda music being played. Oh, yeah. yeah. I yes. cried at the end of Breath of the Wild, and I anticipate uh, tears on my king, though. Uh, <laughs> king she cried on my, <laughs> my king, though. <laughs> she cried on my king, though. Oh, she cried shit. on my king, though. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm shit, that's my king, though. <laughs> I'm fully expecting that's tears. Oh, that's my king. I think I'll probably beat the game the tonight. Because he's dead. <laughs> uh, no, that's... that's so uh, I'm pretty excited. That's a super good, like, parallel to a lot of the shit I talk about in the FromSoft video is that it's like, I was talking about this with Eddie the other day because, I mean, he hasn't seen it because I have to finish it tonight at this point. We're recording it. Yeah, um, yeah. But I was telling him, I was like, I was feeling a little bit nervous, you know, when you're working on something and you start and you're like, this is awesome. This oh, is great. Curve, yeah. And you get into the middle of it because this is like a 36 long minute video and you get into that middle section. And when you're just watching this middle section without the rest of the context, which in reality is a blip, like when people are watching it, it goes yeah. by. But when I'm editing it second by second, I'm like, this is so boring. It's this, not even this it's, three second vibe this, is like this oh, vibe is off. And what I was telling him is that it's so much. I realized that like a lot of it is about the fundamental game design and how Dark Souls specifically influenced a lot of games and then how their other games like influenced things later too or like innovated on different aspects of Dark Souls. But what I was telling him is like the Rockstar video and the Naughty Dog video are very much technical that it's like it's it's very much my opinions, but they're rooted in these things that I think are like the game design of this. With the FromSoft video, it's like I get like a bit more emotional about mm. it. Not not that it's like, oh my God, this is, but but I talk about how when you're saying the vibes, that it goes off a lot of vibes. It's like those narratives are so fucking it, deliberately obtuse, which I think is great because people oh, piece it yeah. together online. But like, I think verbatim in the video, I say the story is so much more about the feeling of exploring a space and the the music and the art and everything. And it's like, that's like the smartest way to do a video game because yeah. it's gameplay based. Like in Zelda, that's yeah. you're hundred percent right. They're Dark like Souls, more... Dark Souls two Majula theme cry I do. every time. Oh, I, and also there's a game that reviewed poorly that yeah. And Dark Souls expected. two is like probably my least favorite in the series. But I say in the video when I'm I kind of do like a spark notes that I talk a lot about Demon Souls and Dark Souls. But then mm -hmm. for everything before Elden Ring, I kind of go a little faster because I'm like okay. I think I say I could do a 40 minute feature presentation on any of these games, but the spark notes I give is that it's like, even these games that I say are flaws, they're not bad games. Like Dark Souls Play 2 them, is like, please. yeah, Dark Souls 2 is like the zones feel very unconnected and the art design is kind of all over the place. And like Miyazaki didn't direct that one, but like, it's still fucking great. Like mm, the combat yeah. is amazing. The power stancing, like all that shit. The, um, yeah, I think that for someone like me, who loves a lore video or who loves a fun fact video, the obtuseness. Yeah, you do zoomies when you see those lore Ooh, notifications. <laughs> I'm jumping up on the couch. You're spinning in your grave, but you're alive and it's bad. Yeah, and it's great. <laughs> um, but I, like, what would I watch going to bed at night if it weren't for these obtuse, like, storylines <laughs> that can now be pieced together over three hours by someone with more time than me. <laughs> yeah. Shout out to Body Video. Good, no, good work to the community. For real. It's so much more interesting, too, than, like, a, a game where they're going to try to do, like, a movie-type narrative, and it's just super predictable and, like, the same <sighs> shit anyways. Just because video game stories are generally, like... They're not bad. That'd be such a whack blanket statement because there's so many games that have good right, stories, right. especially indie games. But I feel like so many specific types of AAA games are just straight up the writing and voice acting is just not good. Like yeah. Zelda is amazing. The writing yeah. and voice acting is not yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. Like I, Nintendo I, is the probably greatest game developer. Not probably. They are the greatest game yeah, developer yeah. now and ever. But holy shit. They... It's Mario and like they're not focusing on the stories yeah, and they yeah. shouldn't either. But when they dip their toes with Breath of the Wild and you hear the voice acting and the writing and it's like, it's not even the worst, but it's just like, whoa, I just had like a euphoric experience climbing a tree. And then I heard Rivali give the speech yeah, yeah. and I wanted to jump <laughs> off the tree. Yeah. You know, if I had a taller one. <laughs> no, I mean, there's like a... It, here, here is a thing that I said in a draft of my final college essay that was not well received by my <laughs> professor, 
games are harder to make than television and movies by a huge fucking margin, especially since there's like, there's just a way shorter archive of examples to go off. They take, especially now, take far longer to make. The people, the the scope of skills is way broader. You can't just um, uh, delegate as easily and say, yeah, just do nice art, please. Yeah, you just need, yeah. do, hey, do good lensing. Make the cinematography good, mm-hmm. which yeah. you kind of can in the position, as long as your cinematography is good enough. And there's just so much like, it's a, it's a very stupid game in a lot of ways, uh, especially in retrospect. But I will always have so much love for Bioshock Mm. To the point where I have the plasma tattoo right here, because that was the first time in any medium, especially for games, where I was like, oh, a, a gaming is a, a palette. It's like a delivery method. It's a completely different genre. It's a different uh, 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 language. You can't deliver a brainwashing story in the way you can in Bioshock in anything else. Because mm-hmm. I did not, in the same way that you can't, deliver like a narrative about revenge and selfishness in the way that you can in The Last of Us and Last of Us 2. Mm-hmm. You can't deliver a sense of exploration like you can in Breath of the Wild. It's just not, oh, tears the kingdom. She tear right. on my, tear on my penis. She, she, she teared on my, on my, my dome. It's, I think that, like, <laughs> Wait. Um, yeah, get off. <laughs> I love a lot of the media that I like, like creates community around it. Like for example, uh, for for my birthday, our good friend Katie oh, yeah. uh, got me lost <laughs> the board game, <laughs> lost the game, uh, and Lost is like one of my favorite shows. Um, part of the reason is because of the like it spawned a community. Like watching it felt like you could be on the subreddits, you could be in the wiki, you could be listening to podcasts around it. And just like the amount of media that was like dedicated to everyone collectively enjoying this thing, I think is a very special way to experience mm-hmm. media. And I, I I see it a lot with, with games. Like when everyone was playing Elden Ring or when everyone's playing like Tears of the Kingdom right the now. Memes. The memes, the it feels like we're all like, fucking, yeah. Dude, like once I played it a bit and my brother knew the extent I'd played and he's like, okay, I've seen some memes. These won't spoil stuff. Now that you know that you can, you know, build stuff, whatever. Yeah. He <laughs> showed me some of the stuff of like the Korok fucking rotisseries and mm-hmm. things people have made. And I'm yeah. like- this is the funniest shit. I think that it's literally the most popular that crucifixion has been in about two thousand years. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> for real. That's I was a very good observation. I was gonna. Uh, I don't know why I didn't. I think it's in my drafts. But I was gonna tweet after I was playing it a bit. I was like, I don't know if this was intentional or unintentional, but Nintendo had to be pissing themselves when they made this because this is the funniest game I've ever played. It's so funny. Like, there's so many things that you fuck up. Like, I put a rocket on a Korok and I just I fucked up, and he went. Zoom! Yeah, like, no, <laughs> my son. Yeah, yeah. Oh. <laughs> there's so much of like uh, someone's yeah, <laughs> someone's like falling or no no no, someone's like building something and they're climbing on something they built and then it like they lose balance and they fall and then they're still crawling on the thing as they like it's, fall into it's the just void. like peak slapstick. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, that's what's I mean. Yeah, like. Comedy in games is is hard because timing is like so the agency of the player is always going to fuck with timing. But slapstick, uh, Hitman twenty sixteen. Oh my especially. god! Especially the Dude, the Hitman games are I. I've watched my friend because you know the freelancer mode that yeah. came out with oh. super amazing. Oh. I'll watch him play it all the time because everyone's different. Anyways, not to interrupt you, but yeah. hilarious. Just like, like of Hitman stuff. Just the fucking majesty, dude, of the way they animate <laughs> you 47. Up and throw stuff and it like <laughs> tracks them. And they, <laughs> they, have all so these little, they have these little prefab lines, um, like little audio lines that they only know play what after doing. you throw it. So it cuts off at the funniest part. Right. So if you aim as soon as you hit right trigger to start throwing it, they'll go like, hey, what are you doing? It's <laughs> like the, um, so they, good. It's they like a level nine Smash Brothers uh, uh, piece. MP- 
Oh my god, CPUs. Take, I, I was like, which time. letters? <laughs> um, CP, the, well, it's like, the oh C- NPCs, uh, <laughs> CPNs. <laughs> um, the CPUs overloading. <laughs> the uh, level nine CPUs read inputs, and yeah. so they they can like do things that like they can it's perfect such carry everything. Bullshit, yeah, it's dude. such bullshit. It's, but that is like the perfect application of yeah. I know exactly what's going to happen. I've done the collision detection. I've done the the trajectories and stuff. Let's play the audio and do dude, the perfect bro, thing. They, they, that's its own little. Those games oh, are like the, especially, I mean, 2016. And I mean, they're like one big game and all of them are really good. Like the one, two and three starting mm-hmm. in 2016. Cause it was like, they released them anyways. They, at that point, like, I don't know if you've read anything about like the development of them and how it's it was kind of troubled and like no. absolution was like the one before it, like critics and fans were kind of like, Oh, it's different. It's changing, whatever. Those the new ones are so cool because it's like everyone fucking wins because the gameplay is so good. When they were first releasing it, they're like going on a tangent here. They kind of they, it was like episodic and it wasn't. But as far as like the nonlinear gameplay and specifically how funny it is, that like you could tell the people making it they know exactly what they're doing. That right. They're like, we're gonna put them in the funniest disguises. We're gonna yeah. let you do mm-hmm. the funniest shit. We're gonna let yeah. you throw this random like jug of what you know like that's just right. we're gonna have you dress up as someone that is a friend of another person and then not going to notice that their friend of years is now bald and white yeah and that's <laughs> a barcode like, oh, yeah. on the back of his head <laughs> yeah. like and the, the the voice lines that 47 does that like when he's supposed to be impersonating oh, yeah. someone and he barely changes his voice <laughs> and they don't notice and it's like yeah they know what they're doing like they, yeah. they're in on the joke and his right. innuendo that he it's like a oh, it's, he does a there's one in the um Whittleton Creek, which is you know, like suburban mm-hmm. uh, U.S. level, you can take someone on a house tour. And oh yeah, <laughs> because dude. you the, the, it, the method is to like take them on the tour until they get distracted, then you can take them out. While you do that tour, you have to pretend to be a real estate agent. That's and so good. It, it's like um, this is the bathroom, a nice clean floor to clean up any messes because he's <laughs> basically talking directly to the player of like if you killed them in this room <laughs> that could be good if you kill them in this room but he's the oh, it's so fucking good the bedroom like, closed curtain so no visibility it's, <laughs> it's like when you're talking about uh tears of the kingdom or games that you play them and you're just like fuck i immediately can't ever play the previous game that i thought mm. was the shit and now it's made awful yeah that's how i feel about the hitman games in terms of so many older stealth games that i liked like yeah. even like i love metal gear solid 3 i yeah. love fucking dishonored or whatever yeah. but when it comes to just mechanics and the sheer like freedom and like non-linear crazy nature especially of like freelancer going back to older stealth games feels so unsatisfying theory, because dude. you you can just do whatever the fuck you want I, in Hitman and it works. I like, emulated uh, Spinner Cell 1 and Chaos Theory on PC recently and I was enjoying myself and I'm like, fucking let me move, man. Just let me let me go. Yeah. I know what I need to do and it, the, I'm operating at 15 FPS and I and can't see. there was see. a time where you thought that, man, it can't get better than this. Yeah, It's, it's real. <laughs> or it's even the... I think like Metal Gear Solid Five gameplay wise immediately did that. It's very similar to Hitman as well. That it's just like the gameplay is so about being like choice driven and you can do whatever the fuck you want. That immediately story wise it's eh. But going back to like Snake Eater, Metal Gear mm. Solid Four, like I'm a huge you know Kojima fan. Yeah. It was like fuck this sucks. Like I can't do anything. It's, what have you yeah. done? My what first you done with my Metal Gear Solid was two amazing and i loved it and i but i it was at the time where everybody was like riding what why oh, dude. where's snake yeah they were having that little last jedi moment yeah yeah, yeah. but huh? man, i was what? i was Talk super, about a game that's aged super well and has it in oh, the gosh. craziest way that's yeah. awesome that's that's the thing is one and two because of the the gameplay design and the, the fixed camera angles and stuff, yeah. those are actually still pretty fun to go back and play because they're very basic. Like, oh, wait for the guard to move, go here, yeah, go yeah, here. yeah. And but narratively, it was insane. I yeah, I oh, actually kind of prophetic. Too. It was no, that's yeah. what I mean of like it holds up the, the the fucking speech at the end where he's talking about the AI and what's going to happen to the government and like media and stuff, and it's exactly what's happening right now. And yeah, it's like, which was oh. tinfoil shit at the time. Yeah, like, now is Kojima like, making Death Stranding before COVID, and it's about. <laughs> Like a country disconnected. Yeah, it's what like, does he know? It's like, what? Yeah, what are you? What are you 
eating. <laughs> Can I? Okay. <laughs> is Jeff Keeley whispering in his ear? With like, I've Jeff Keeley is his oracle. You <laughs> might know. I have foretold. Their <laughs> friendship is my favorite thing. But uh, you might know more about this. You probably both know more about this than me. So um, Konami announced that they're doing mm. a remake of MGS3. Snake, snake beater. But... <laughs> But Metal Kojima's like three. kind of been like unceremoniously ousted from He's like completely uninvolved with Yeah, it. no, yeah. Konami's fucking after Metal Gear Solid 5, they've like and I love how outspoken Jeff is of just being like, Yeah, fuck that. I saw him on a podcast with like skill up in uh the oh, yeah. friends is it friends per friends per second. Friends per second. Um and he was just very clearly like, Yeah, no, fuck that, not impressed. Like Konami is uh, they I think one of the first things they did after Cutting ties with Kojima. They like released a shitty Metal Gear game. Yeah, they released oh, like yeah. a pachinko survive. machine. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and, and Metal Gear Survive. I totally yeah, forgot survive, about that. Yeah. yeah. Um, what, ha- like, I actually don't know what happened because I don't on, know. On the internet, exactly people either. were like, um, Metal Gear Solid 5 went over budget. And so Konami got mad. But that seems so simple because it made money. No, Metal Gear Solid 5 did like crazy well. Yeah. yeah. For- Konami's just bad to work with i remember when reading into it that was the biggest thing i took away is that lined up with a lot of other moves they were doing at the time of getting into like fucking pachinko machines or doing xyz that's just like bad vibes (sighs) and but also kojima i'm sure isn't always exactly the easiest person to work with i i still think he's the man i i think he's i think he's hilarious i think he's awesome in his posts and his his, posts he's my favorite person to follow on captionless instagram post that's just what he's listening to yeah yeah, he's like carrying guillermo del toro and holding a pizza and no caption yeah and like rio de janeiro yeah he like bought a physical cd (laughs) of like a song he likes this tangent but there is do you remember a video I had that it's like I it was for a while it was my pinned tweet that it did crazy well it was a video that I took at Universal of Matt Watson drinking a fake beer on yeah, the iPhone yeah, yeah. thing where I pan right. over to him and he's drinking the phone and I pan back to Eddie and Eddie goes whoa <laughs> It did so well. It was retweeted by not only Kojima's account, but his like English translation account. <laughs> That's so awesome. whoever was running his social media was like, this needs to be seen in all regions. This is going to crush amazing. internationally. So that, that's my only uh, interaction with Kojima. But he's he's that's someone so that sick. if I met, I would I would be a little starstruck. I'd yeah. Be like, yeah. I'm safe with Jeff. Yeah. <laughs> him and Keith. I've seen the holding hands. No, for real. It. I've watched, I've seen Jeff on so many different TV screens for so many different years that I would be like, oh, yeah. Are you, oh, do you remember the photo with the Doritos of the, the year? <laughs> What was what was with that uh, Bill Clinton kid, huh? What the uh um do PS f- f- six? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> That's all you can think to say. Your brain is shutting down. But like more PS more PS. Uh, you play Brent Brent of uh, the Wild. Brent Brent no. Brent 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 of the Wild. Uh, flight <laughs> the reality yeah. show about a guy named Brett. It's like a Survivor style show. Brett of the Wild. <laughs> of the Wild. They just we took Brett and, and we dropped him in the. It's like Cambodian. naked and afraid. But uh, where Brett. am I? <laughs> I'm yeah. Brett. <laughs> um, where am I? I'm Brett is also a good Where am I? I'm a Brett. Um, <laughs> so I don't know much. We were mentioning the Gollum game. I've just seen the screenshots. And I'm it, so confused. It's almost enough confused. to just tell from the screenshots. Like it, I watched uh, the only stuff I've seen review or trailer wise was I watched Skillop's review. Yeah. And I really like that he... A, I, I don't know him, but I really like his videos. I've I think I think he's one of the the best game critics. I've never um, watched him. And he's he's so consistent and you can tell that he just really cares. Yes. And he talking about reviews before of like I feel like a lot of people just put it on the value or talk about different things. I think that he does a really good job of just letting you know like this is what I personally think. If you know my taste, go off that. You might right. be different. But I like that he specifically says like I don't want to be making these videos. Like mm-hmm. he he's aware that if you're dunking on something, it'll do better than if you're praising something and that it's so easy to roast this. But he I like that he says in the videos like I'm never rooting for a game to do bad because people's lives and jobs are behind this. Right. You know? That being said, it is so like, not only does the game look like it was made on like a PS2 or PS3, but narratively, I don't know how the fuck they got the IP of Lord of the Rings to play with. 
for example, Let he alone talks about so much marketing money. Yeah. And like I one of the parts that stuck with me that he talked about in his review is that just narratively he, Gollum is like it's almost like a life sim and you like take care of this baby bird that becomes your sidekick that you can commit. And this is Gollum who's like, like eating a fish Gollum. <laughs> it's Gollum yeah. like deep into gollum Yeah. <laughs> like, it's, it's before Lord of the Rings, but it's like after the Hobbit. Yeah. You know? But it's like, it's just, again, you look at a screenshot and it's like the visuals are enough to, yeah. that's not even the worst that, you know. I love that there's a $10 bonus pack, Precious oh, Edition. That's right. Yeah. yeah. And that includes emotes, a compendium of lore. Of and course. that was part of Skillup's video that he's like, I don't want to be making this video. It's not good to be dunking on people, but also when they're marketing it like this and there's this $70 thing where they're part of what you got with the pre-order was something that was like, uh, I don't know. If, yeah. If it was like the compendium or something that would yeah. usually just oh, come yeah. with a game, like an a lore index and the Witcher or something. And yeah. it's like, that was something they, that I'm sure it's not on the developers, but it's on the publisher or whatever. Yeah. It was like, Hey, reserve that for the pre-order version. He's like, I feel like it's free game to dunk on this game. <laughs> There's like, a lot in it, yeah. especially that compendium and like the emotes and the like where it's like, wow, did you, did you extract this from the development cycle so early mm -hmm. that it was actually I forgot done about the emotes. a week yeah. before it goes gold? Because the emotes quote, two of them are like catching a fly. <laughs> That's like an emote, I guess. As opposed to just like an idle animation. I was going to say, it's like when Mario falls asleep or something. Yeah. It's yeah, like, it's, yeah. Pay an extra $10 and Sonic will tap his foot. When you're like, right. <laughs> yeah. uh, but what was the other? Oh, the now he's tapping in Morse code. And he's saying, <laughs> yeah. chili dog. <laughs> 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 Gotta go chili dog. <laughs> Uh, but then the other thing was, yeah, that compendium's like full of typos and like, <laughs> it's like formatted it's incorrectly. It's like it was written by like a sixth grader. It was, like, it Gollum was, was a bad guy. Chat GPT. <laughs> yeah. um, Gollum and Gandalf and the Jedi. <laughs> uh, someone said it was a, felt like a huge game of red light, green light. I was watching a little bit of a uh, criticals playthrough of it. Um, yeah, I have I think it's like a six hour game or something like that. Oh, okay. So that's like, not very that's, long. That's probably <laughs> for the best. Or, yeah, I just know he played it for a few hours and then he played it again and he was like, someone told me I was halfway through and I have three hours left, so. I think it's one of those things where it would be, I could see it happening where it becomes like a popular speed running game. Yeah. That's what people because were saying. I love that kind of, like you said, like a community surrounding a game yeah, and the lore becoming the development of mechanics for like a summoning salt video that's, or something. Like, that's one of my favorite, one of my favorite things about games Another thing about games where a community can be built around it because of, you know, it becomes a good speed speed game or something. Or it's like people loving like a movie that was supposed to be good that's really, really bad. Yeah. That's like, oh, let's make this fun. I think right. it's sweet that like really no matter what, whether it's sincere or ironic or uh, big scale, small scale, whatever, I feel like human beings are so coded, naturally coded like to a game. commune. A little bit scripted, if you will. Mm, C++. Yeah. Yeah, so by good. God. <laughs> C++ is by God. My God uses Python. <laughs> <laughs> Let's kill him. <laughs> but like, uh, uh, I mean, the same applies for, you know, we all have like little, little followers that like build their own little groups and discords and, you know, like make friends in comment sections uh, and stuff like that. People uh, were, one of our mods, um, shout out to Sarah, uh, Joe Biden, um, oh. that's, that's their handle. Um, Joe Biden, Joe Biden, J Joe Biden actually, it's oh. just spelled different. They, um, cha they changed the name to that during a me and Nick stream in yeah. 2020. <laughs> yeah. I actually don't know if that's their current Deep cut. discord, Fuck. but, but they were doing, um, watch alongs, like, like getting a group of people together in our discord to like watch the new podcasts as they come that's out. So and I was cool. like, that is so sweet. That's, that's cute. Um, I, I mean, I mean I, and it makes yeah. sense. You have a common interest and it's like, like you said, with like a, a game or like a show coming out or like, like I just finished Barry, which no spoilers. Yeah. I, I haven't finished it. So I, I'm not even, I won't even talk about like opinions on it because Hold I feel on, like I could build hater in it. I, I, Spoiler alert. But he uh, stood in the background and <laughs> immediately after like watching something as it's coming out can be super fun with the discussion. And I yeah. wish I was doing that for succession. I'm, I'm behind. I'm still in season three and I, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to catch one. up before I inevitably get spoiled. And yeah. Billy really wants to talk about it because she finished it. But I, uh, 
I immediately go to Reddit after every week, every episode. Yes, because I'm like, what do y'all think? And it's like such a cool community. I love reading. I'm just a lurker too. I never contribute. But yeah, I I mean, I very rarely see takes that. I I very rarely have a take that's not also expressed better and more articulately when I'm reading. Yeah, Yeah. it's a lot of the time. It's like, well, this was my take on it, my interpretation, and then I read it, and it'll be people that were either have like a similar one and I'm like, oh, okay, I wasn't crazy or people that'll take it and go in a different direction. And then I'm like, oh, like I did that a lot with Better Call Saul. Mm -hmm. That was another one that every week episode would come out and I'd be like, what are these MFs saying about this? I got to watch Better Call Saul because I I, I was a late bloomer to Breaking Bad. So it's only natural that I'm a late comer to uh, Better Call Saul. But I didn't know, I think in the initial seasons, people were like, not lukewarm on it, but they weren't like grabbing you by the collar and going, you have to watch it. It starts show. pretty slow. And then when it ended, everybody was like, this could be better than Breaking Bad. I know. I'm, I'm and in And I that, was like, oh, I, fuck. It is weird. It, it, the show's never boring. And what people forget about Breaking Bad is Breaking Bad was a catharsis show. It mm-hmm. was very, very, very slow for 10 episodes. And then one thing would happen. Mm-hmm. And then it's like, goes back to edging for another yeah, 10 yeah, episodes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Better Call Saul is faster paced than Breaking Bad. Like mm-hmm. more happens. It's, it, mm-hmm. There's more like events. It's more like like exciting at beats, but it is way better than Breaking Bad. Like it in my, and I like Breaking Bad, but I will rewatch. I I don't even think that that's the most controversial take because there were times, especially in watching, I think that the first couple seasons of Better Call Saul are they're Yeah. It's weird because they're not slow. Like things are happening, but I think that they're, the type of narrative they're setting up because they have to set up so many different things until you know exactly where it's going. You might be, if you're like me coming off Breaking Bad, you're going to be mm-hmm. a little bit like, well, this feels like nothing, you know, it's slow or whatever. But after finishing Better Call Saul and starting it over, I was like, oh, this is amazing. Like, you, you know, but the uh, there were several moments during the last couple seasons, especially the last season where I was like, this is better than Breaking Bad. Mm-hmm. Like I, I still don't know exactly where I fall in the camp, but I think that as far as like higher highs, I think Better Call Saul reaches higher peaks. I think that I think Vince Gilligan and team were just given so much runway because of the position they built up from yeah. Breaking Bad to the point where like, oh my, wow. Okay. Yeah. Um, Naughty Dog's a reliable studio. Let's give them a shit ton of money mm-hmm. and the most advanced engine to build the most advanced engine we've had so far and then release The Last of Us and completely change the industry. Mm-hmm. It feels to that same level where like, well, yeah, you couldn't have made Better Call Saul without Breaking Bad and you couldn't make Tears of the Kingdom without Breath of the Wild, but it feels it's just like, incredible. I feel like the, uh, the, people say is like the greatest episode of Breaking Bad, the Ozymandias one. Mm-hmm. It's like, I think three before the series ends, mm-hmm. which is amazing. And there's so like just thematically and the direction and the editing and everything feels, and I think that one's Ryan Johnson. Yeah. Of like mm-hmm. Last it Jedi is. and stuff, which yeah. is like, it's I, know people, bad. I know people, yeah, people it's have different opinions, bad. but I, that episode is amazing. But just that feeling of like, oh my God, where is this going? And this feels so like everything built up to this. I feel like so much of the, especially last season of Better Call Saul, because they have Breaking Bad to go off of and they know your expectations mm-hmm. of you know where this is going they build off of that so well that 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 last season of Better Call Saul is up there with like True Detective season one for like some oh, of my yeah. favorite yeah. TV ever like it's so good it gets away with things that like you could, I'd be so curious what some some people's experiences are of it that haven't seen Breaking Bad because the little the dialogue it's having with you as someone that knows the law is entertaining but in the same way that like like when I played Resi 4 Remake the whole time I'm like, oh, you sneaky bastards, like seeing little references. Or playing like Red Dead 2 if you hadn't played Red Dead 1, which was... Most. In in that case, like Red Dead 2 stands on its own really, really well, but it is really rewarding to play if you've played the first game and you know, like, I think that... I think there was a video essay I saw on YouTube talking about Red Dead 2 and Better Call Saul as like some of the greatest prequels ever made. What is that? I mean, you mentioned Lost as one. But what do you have a earliest or most memorable community that you got pulled into? Um, in any media, any. Uh, it's probably Pokemon. So oh, yeah, when sense. I so when I was in high school, uh, I think I've talked about this before. But when I was in high school, I got into like competitive battling, like VGC, um, like uh, Pokemon stuff, and I was 
listen What's to this Pokemon. VGC? Yeah, video game competition, but it's like... Oh, okay. I think that's what it stands for. But Virgin game, Gamer. Come. Virgin but, Gamer come. But that's I'm what... Whoa, dude. Nice, man. Dude, gamer come. Ever use fucking use say that promo again. code <laughs> thirsty. You, <laughs> use <laughs> milk. Freeze. Thirsty. Thirsty. <laughs> RGB. Um, <laughs> yeah. Use promo code, uh, yeah, our, like neon green lights. <laughs> <laughs> Alienware. Alien, All one word. Yeah, neon green Use promo code. Yeah. Bright lights. Bright lights. <laughs> um, the, yeah, so I used to like play like competitive Pokemon battling and I was watching this, or I used to listen to this podcast and I was in like a flash chat for the, the podcast and uh, I would became a moderator of it, and I became like a contributor to the, oh, so the you forum. Were in it. Yeah, and I would like write guides about like EV training and stuff like that. Um, and I would guest on the podcast sometimes. This was like when I was like eighteen, <laughs> like seventeen, eighteen. Hell yeah! Um, and so that was like the first, mm, a little bit with RuneScape earlier than that. Um, but I wasn't a big contributor. But definitely I was like, listen, I listened to a bunch of RuneScape podcasts. I paid attention to like things that were happening in the game. I I made RuneScape content very early on. Like some of my first videos on YouTube were like RuneScape, like PK videos and shit. Um, that's where my, uh, that's, so my username on my YouTube channel, you know how there's like three different versions of the like channel name on YouTube? Like uh, youtube.com slash user slash Oh yeah, youtube.com yeah. slash channel slash. Mm -hmm. So the user is the old one, but my username is like V Sympathy V, which was the name of my RuneScape Pure account. Hell uh, yeah, back in the day. V. Uh, it's like like the X name X, mm -hmm. but V. Mm -hmm. Hell yeah. yeah, and it was like there were spaces. Um, uh, so those those communities, I would say. Mm, I'm I'm going back even further. You know. When I was like really young and I would play, I would play in TCG tournaments. I would play in like uh, Yu-Gi-Oh tournaments and stuff at my, I talked about this. I, someone told me on the pod or in the comments on Patreon that the, the, the game store closed, but that was a little bit like a community, but not quite, not quite there. Yeah. You, King? I don't know. One that uh, came to mind that I feel like I've just kind of, when I've gotten into stuff, I've been guilty of being a lurker a lot of the time and reading about like different souls games this or that but i did remember that it wasn't <clears throat> it wasn't something that i was super active for a while but i think as i was getting more into thinking about games as like art or like i played bioshock or like i played shadow of the colossus and mm. it was like yo these mfs are spitting i think speaking of game trailers i think it was either game trailers or destructoid or some gaming public publication that I frequented that I was actually, I think it was game trailers that in the forums that people could just post stuff. I remembered <clears throat> I was just like reading stuff and reading people post and I just played Call of Duty 4 and I played that all gillied up mission. That's like mm -hmm. a really famous one. That's super amazing for the time of like the scripted sequence, but you're like stealth and then you get in and you snipe the guy and you get out and it's like all scripted and Shoot whatever. His arm off. but it's yeah, but it's really cinematic. And I remember I I totally forgot about this still just now, but it's probably one of the first times I actually put like pen to paper of writing my thoughts about a game. I remember I had a post that I was just like, I just played the all gillied up mission and wow, whatever. And I just talked about it a bit. And it actually did like kind of well that it had people responding. Yeah. Like, oh yeah, that was really great. Blah, blah, blah. And it was like, you know, around the time that like Portal or like Bioshock or games were coming right. out that were more like narratively interesting, but. Yeah, I, that did remind me of that. That I was like, yeah. oh, damn, I was in those forums a little bit. I had yeah. a horrible first post like that. It yeah. was me giving, commenting on someone that was criticizing Heavy Rain when that first <laughs> came out and me being like, no, Dave games Cage. are finally art <laughs> yeah, because yeah. now it's movies. Dude, I love, <laughs> I, I love Heavy Rain, but yeah, not for the reasons that's like, it's where gaming is headed, but just because it's fun. It's the room. It's, <laughs> it's so fun to just sit down with friends and play and like there are moments where with the different choices and stuff where you're like they were kind of on to something here with different mechanics of like this is kind of a neat video game and then there's so many other times where you're like you just want it and someone talks <laughs> <laughs> like, oh. Jordan didn't you like lie about your age to like contribute to like video game oh websites? yeah I, I kept trying to get the, my thoughts published <laughs> on like uh, websites that now in 
retrospect would not have cared if I were under 18. Like, you know, I would just do it under a pseudonym or something. Yeah. But I, um, I reached out to, and they were so like indie at this point. I don't even remember the size. I'm sure I did it with IGN as well, but they, they just never replied. Why would they? Um, but I, I, yeah, I used to write a single dog shit like pop, like that article and be like, why the Walking Dead game's actually kind of cool. <laughs> <laughs> and then I would like, uh, oh, I guess some stuff when I was even younger, that was like more impressive. It's like, oh yeah, why, uh, why uh, Bioshock 2 uh, represents redemption or whatever. And then Bioshock I would- Bioshock 2 is, is great. Bioshock uh, underrated, over, overhated. I think I like it better than Infinite. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Gameplay wise, but also anyway, we don't have to. We hey, come on, on that now. tangent. Yeah. Um, uh, well, you know what I will say about Bioshock Infinite is, hey, there's heroes on both sides, man. Hey, poli- yeah, I'm a centrist, <laughs> man. I, I can't. Hey, man, it's uh, revolting against racism and, and r- racial purity is exactly the same as being a fascist. <laughs> it's uh, you know, the part where you can choose to not throw the thing at the guy and it doesn't make any difference. That part's cool. Look, dude, makes you think about something. Not nothing specific. <laughs> Someone grabs your arm either way, and you, yeah, cool. Anyways, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I'm not used, racist. I didn't throw the thing. I used to write uh, bullshit articles and then submit them uh, under different names under the fear that they might Jordan communicate. Jordan Radica. Money. <laughs> <laughs> Big um, money Attica. Gordon. Gordon <laughs> Dramsey. <laughs> yeah. We can't track this guy. Gordon, um, uh, not free man. <laughs> Gordon. <laughs> Gordon. That was from the time, right? <laughs> hey, remember, Fox. remember Half-Life? I don't you winning, know. son? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I used to uh, submit those under different names, under the impression that like they'd have some kind of central communication method, what? and the X website would reach out to the other. If you've received any submissions, because you were you, you weren't like posting on like forms or stuff, you would submit it to like the I would what, send it whatever to whatever email contact f- forms or like the for IGN Korea's yeah. at <laughs> yeah, and if <laughs> they publish it, they'd be like, oh yeah, we'd pay you a nickel for this, yeah, dude. Yeah. And, and that's the thing too. I think one of the reasons that people get so bent out of shape about like like the gaming community can be so toxic is that there's like all this mythology around gaming scores and gaming critique and gamers air quote, especially like late 2000s, say Gamergate era gamers, they seem to be under the impression that game reviewers are paid extremely well and have the best job in the world. Yeah. As opposed to just like, scratching minimum wage, I think usually I've, living in a very I've heard place. Alana talk about that from yeah. working at IGN, where it's just like, people have such this predisposed, like they're paid off by the publication or they and it's like, maybe there's been some cases of some shitty review site getting paid, yeah. but it's like to say such a blanket thing that's like all oh, IGN reviewers, it's like, first of all, they're, yeah, they're not making that much money yeah, to begin yeah. with. Like. If anything, there's the thing about like um, wanting to still be able, still receive the game for review. Like yeah, I know that there's been the some stuff like that. Get invited to events. Get invited get, to yeah. events. Like that, that can, that makes way more sense to me than like specific payola where it's like, hey, yeah. like give us a good review. What's up? care right like yeah go for it i don't mind if you want to soften your feelings yeah at the end of the day harassed i think yeah i think at the end of the day the reviews are like so there's no way they're never going to be super not like subjective and so i think you're really just going it for a general idea of like is this made well is it a golem is it x y z i think one of the a golem oh that sucks uh, that's going to become industry term yeah. yeah Damn, trademark that. This is this game is precious, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> Speaking of uh game trailers and Brandon, I what I really love is that they and it kind of just shows that review scores are like they fluctuate so much that like I think Dark Souls 1 IGN gave it a nine. And then they also will have articles that are like, why this is the most important game of the last 10 years. And it's like both of those things can be true. That game yeah. has flaws. What scale are you, you know? <clears throat> rating it on but what i i really love that when game trailers went down one of the last things they did is they edited their bloodborne review that was like a 9.6 or something to a 10 oh i think just because it, and, and it the review is the same i don't think he re-recorded or anything i think all that changed at the end was the score because it was like ah uh, we we had that wrong that it was like actually oh, this game which it's like I don't know. It's all, I don't know where I'm going with this other than just like review yeah. scores don't actually matter. What was is that? kind of what I mean. There but was the, a famous review. I want to say, do you know about the too much water 
Oh, yeah. Uh, not Wind Waker. It was, it was which it, fucking. A lot of people, they, it, it's on IGN where they have those, they put the images up on the review with the positives oh. and the uh-huh. negatives. Oh, and yeah, it's like, like plus, and if plus. you watch the review, you know that with that thing, they meant more by that little excerpt. Not trying to just super defend IGN, but a yeah, little yeah, bit yeah. of like, when they have that end score, they have those things. It, it's not negative just because too much water. What they mean by that was this whole other thing they probably went into, but it's still on them that they put that at the yeah. end of two. It's like, you know how that looks, well, right? They're like, summarizing because 90% of the audience is just scrolling directly to the saw because that's where the exactly. capital D discourse gets to and be. And so that's why it's still on them that if they know most people are skipping to the end, why would they put just too much water <laughs> or for a call of duty like uh, didn't, you know, innovate enough. And then the score next to it is still a 9.8. And it's yeah. like, you if know, people like, aren't going to have your context. So why are you, if then minus was like too loud. And then you read the review and it's like, Oh, like thematically. That's a perfect example. Yeah. Scary. <laughs> um, yeah. It was on Pokemon Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. What? Really? Which are remakes of Ruby and Sapphire, which are games that are kind of built around the water. So is like, in like traversing. So was, context is super important. Con, that one, yeah, on context is important of, because it's like they didn't revamp one of the core. Like it's like I don't know. It's it's yeah. It's a weird context thing, but it just became a meme. Like mm-hmm. it became a meme it's, because it's almost of, to the degree of like, do you do you think they intentionally did it to drive discourse? Like, oh, we know this will piss people off. I but. think it was just like a flippant comment that like didn't really have that much gravitas to it. But, but it's when like you the exaggerated the, swagger of a, oh, a, the, of when a the guy, <laughs> when the guy <laughs> said it, you know he fully didn't think twice about it at all. It's, <laughs> but, but it like it has outlived everything else I, from. <laughs> Every like, time I hear that, I know the exact footage that's playing while he says it mm-hmm. as like Miles is walking towards the edge <laughs> with the exaggerated swagger I mean, like, of a black does teen. does a backflip off the it. exaggerated so funny. swagger. Fingers typing it, words saying it at no point. In like- <laughs> yeah, but I don't even think it's like, um, I, I think it is kind of when viewed under the like lens of Gamergate, right? Where like no review of a game written by a woman. I think it was a, like a woman who wrote that IGN review can be valid. Yeah. Then like you're going to nitpick and take things in the most uncharitable way possible. So like, I think that that's like wh- how it became the meme. Um, because I don't think, I mean, it, it's one of those things because I watch so many Pokemon fun fact videos. I've like heard it referenced in like isolation. But when I just looked at the know your meme page, I was like, that's probably what this is. Yeah. No, it it is interesting that specifically with uh, female game critics that it's like, I think the score really doesn't mean that much if you, again, know that like, I have loved games that are 7 out of 10. I love Max Payne 3. But I remember like the GTA 5 IGN review, it is a woman that is at least presenting it. And I'm pretty sure she's the one that wrote it. And they gave it a 10 out of 10. Mm -hmm. But she also does touch on how there's stuff in the game that could be a little bit tone deaf or problematic, Mm -hmm. I think. But I think because she still gave it a 10 out of 10, I think it was a lot more, those criticisms were probably a lot better received in the comments, which is so stupid because the second, if she gave the game anything other than a 10, so many gamers would immediately jump to the fact that she's a woman in their criticism well, of like, well, of course she did this because blah, 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 blah. But because she gave it a 10. upset about that. Which Bias. is so, it, it's just it's uh, gamers, man. I was going to say there is a gamer thing where uh, you love something very dearly. And so to see someone criticize it or not share the same, you hold it so close to your identity that someone's saying that something is a 7.8 out of 10, Mm -hmm. which is like that review score, the too much water thing was a 7.8, which isn't a bad score. That's the thing. It's It's a Pokemon remake. It's like whatever. It should be a great score. It should be. But the dialect of review scores is so warped by like, you know, what there's been... 10 games in history that have gone to three or below or Anything whatever. Anything you know, below, just, I think it's universally, and I think it's because of IGN and these other critics that it's like, I, th- I think it's kind of on them that it's, the norm is that it's like anything below an eight is yeah. not a good game. Yeah, which is wild. Crazy. Because it's it fucking is like, insane. That, that feels like very good. That's four stars. Like, yeah. I, I, I <laughs> the three think star it's, movie is terrible. It's, it's the thing too where it's like, I think that uh, in theory... 
when you yeah when you look at movies if a movie has like a 60 or above on metacritic like rotten tomatoes you know if it, it's because it's about the percentage of mm. critics that are just positive yeah but on like metacritic or something where it is about the score anything that's like a 60 or up i'm like oh that's like a pretty good movie yeah i saw fat but the, if it's a game yeah it's like you know, golem this getting like like a, a reaches fit. out of the fucking screen and punches you in the mouth <laughs> yeah steals your dad or something <laughs> the, um, <laughs> steals the, your dad. i just, sucks. I just <laughs> saw the new like fast and furious movie Movie, which isn't great i guess i'm sure it's fun but you know what i mean like i enjoyed myself at no point was i thinking i was like laughing and having a good time with friends and it got what a 55 on metacritic okay i don't it didn't take away from my enjoyment right. am i gonna hold it up as like a bastion of cinema no am i gonna tell someone it's amazing if they ask me no but if somebody goes to see that movie i'm not gonna go halt you know like you yeah. can't see it it's it's scoring poorly it in reviews right i mean i feel like the og toxic criticism discourse is probably like music criticism oh yeah i mean you're closer to this than than we are yeah because you make you make terrible music and <laughs> sorry yeah uh, honestly my, too much i got water. my, my <laughs> in yeah. tracks. wet track you're like yeah. the mixing is just like it's, sloppy I honestly mean it's, it's, it's shit's wet. underwater it's man ASMR. Yeah. too much water would be a really cool wrap up line for like if there's like over processing on a record it's too wet it's, yeah. it's like too much water too that much re cool. wet reverb too, yeah. too, too much water too, it's too wet let's get a fire mix yeah. <laughs> nirvana is never mind <laughs> it, it's a baby it's not the baby yeah. in the water yeah too much water <laughs> that one's called wet baby uh, yeah wait, that first album wet baby <laughs> wet baby dude, dollar honestly? penis baby <laughs> it's so hard greedy baby <laughs> <laughs> um Speaking of music, how yeah. is that? Do you like it? Do, it's, you, do you enjoy it? It's good. It's fun. I feel like uh, I I definitely kind of burned myself out in losing my mind trying to finish that album. And I was so, it became so much about just like, let's just finish it and get it out the door. But then obviously, like we're talking about editing, as you're doing it, you're like, well, this is important to me and I want it to be the best. And right. so it took me a billion years and had to like find myself, so to speak. That's like a lot of, it's hard. I bet it's really hard to push yourself through it when you've already kind of like given a lot of your energy to something I, there were definitely aspects to it where i knew like i just have to get this out the door yeah. where mm -hmm. i had to just give myself a deadline and be like whatever it is it is and it led to like moments where i think inevitably in a creative process i think that unless you have some sort of deadline or something that's going to push you things just won't happen that's mm -hmm. like a pretty blanket statement but for example it was like some of those verses and different lyrics and things that came together that I might feel like eh about now at the time only came together because I was like, fuck, something has to happen. Like there are tracks like the second track that like totally freaked me out, went through so many different versions and there's so many different B-sides. And sometimes it was like a house song. It was like a dance song. And I might actually release some of those versions that'll yeah, be coming. Yeah, yeah. But the final takes on that, like the awesome, oh wow, like that the... the and the specific lyrics, I was so sick and it was a week before it came out and I recorded those because I was like, fuck, none of this is working. All right, I'll do this. So you can hear in the mix that I'm like a little nasally or a little like, eh, because I was like sitting in my friend's apartment in New York, just holding the mic with like a blanket over me yeah, and just like, yeah. ah. but it's like, it is what it is. I think I sweated it for a while, but now. I think the beauty, just like with videos, is once it's out, it's like sending your kid off to college. Yeah, you're like, yeah. I tried my best. You're going to do whatever you're going to do, and I'm just going to focus on it. Well, did yeah. you have like kind of a mourning period in the same way that like empty nest syndrome almost? Yeah. yeah. I'm so that, glad my kid has gone to college, but fuck, No, man. that is actually, that makes the metaphor work even better, is that it's this thing where it was like I, uh, and I, I touch on it in the FromSoft video because part of the reason why it's taken me so long to really make a big video on not only from soft, but specifically Elden Ring is because the year it came out, I was, I was playing it, but I was also losing my mind on this album because yeah. I had said it would come out in February, February came and went, that didn't fucking happen. A bunch of sh personal stuff. Like I, uh, I, anyways, it was definitely a thing that once it was out, it was kind of this, it was this relief, but also right. this immense, like, Oh, mm. and then kind of this like hole a little bit, but then also like fortunately it was received pretty well. It's a great album, thank you. Yeah, I loved it. And um, it, but it's I think it's just that thing that anytime you finish something, you're like, okay, on to the next thing. But I think specifically with music, I've only recently been kind of dipping my toes again because I think I I don't know. It kind of like 
I, it really made me real, and this is getting into some like deeper territory, but it, it really made me reevaluate like kind of what I wanted or what I right. thought about myself and my ego and what I want to be. Like, do you want to be a musician? Do you want right. to be a YouTuber? Do you want, and it's like, no, I just want to make stuff. But I think also like putting something that was definitely by far like the most personal project I'd mm -hmm. put out. And that's like really draining in itself. And it's this yeah. thing where it's like, I don't think it's perfect. But it's not would you ever, right? right. There's like not it's a like, version yeah, of how you. How could that, you? Yeah. Yeah. But and and but it's a thing that it just I don't know. I don't know where I'm going with this, but it's it's really, really I like appreciate it so much that when people say like, oh, it, I really connected with this or this meant a lot to yeah. me. Yeah. But it's also this struggle with myself that there's times where I think that they're the biggest pieces of shit. And I think <laughs> that I'm pitchy and I think that my lyrics are whack. And sure. I think and then sometimes, you know, you see criticism online and fortunately it seems to be generally well received but you see different criticism like you know the needle drop like responded to it on stream and it's like me and fantano we're like pals whatever and eventually in his uh like why you know review like mm -hmm. year end he said some pretty nice things about it of like oh yeah no i think that production wise it's promising and he had talked about my tracks prior but i'm not gonna lie like when it first came out he had a a, a stream highlight where the thumbnail is just like pretty clickbaity of just like my face and him just being like, uh, and like not good in oh, big letters and in, in the live reaction on stream. He like listens to it and tracks that I, you know, personally am very proud of whatever. But again, it's like, I know that there's other times where I think they're kind of cringy or whatever. It's just how sure, you feel. But, but yeah. it was, it was something that I, I have no ill will or anything towards him. I think that, you know, I, I still am watching the videos and I take them all with a grain of salt because yeah, at the end to. of the day, he says like, you know, this is just my opinion, but I will say it, it was kind of disappointing that like, not only to be, uh, I think it did put it in perspective a little bit of having watched other videos where he has like talked about someone or kind of not like ripped into them, but was that on the live, uh, listening to the album. So it's like the first time he's listening to it and he's listening with chat and he even will admit and knows that his chat can be like atrocious on Twitch. Right. But he's like playing sound effects or like doing like bah, 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 and or like, mm -hmm. you know, in the middle of listening to this song or whatever being like, okay, I think there's enough of that. But then later on, he talks about how there were elements that he liked. I don't know. I don't know where I'm going with this, but it was, it was definitely a learning lesson where I think I had watched so many game critics and I am myself a game critic and I've watched so many different music reviews, his included. And I think being on the receiving end of that was very important criticism. And I think that it fucked me up a little bit more than I kind of realized or like admitted to myself for a while. And now I feel very much at peace with it, but there was definitely a moment where I was like, damn, like it got to me. Like it doesn't feel good to have someone yeah. say, but at the same time, it's like specifically to Fantano, I like actually really value his opinion and I sure. find his videos really entertaining. And like, I've been on his podcast and stuff and we yeah, like, yeah, yeah. we haven't talked since then, but again, I have like, he's just doing his thing. You know, he's like I've called videos, blah, blah, blah is outdated. And that's such a blanket statement. Sure. And I mm -hmm. feel like I back it up in different claims. And that's and just how the that's how this industry works. You know, right. you have to have a take. And even if you have a nuanced take, like I feel like we often do, all of everyone in this room often does. And I feel like Fantano often does and too. Fantano often does. You have to be like, uh, you have to leave that, that um, curiosity open of like, yeah. oh, what's it going to be? Mm -hmm. You know, and, and it, and it, and negativity spreads so much further than like, neutral or extremely positive until you get into like the Mr. Beast levels of like right. extreme philanthropy positivity. It's a thing that I think is also a reminder. And I, I feel like I rode the line. Like, I'm not going to lie. I still feel pretty good about the rock star and the naughty dog video because I felt very passionate about these things. And like, I'm criticizing them because I love them, but I feel like I made it a point in the beginning to really preface, like I have friends that worked on The Last of Us Part Two. Like I yeah. love Rockstar games. Like I'm not making these to be like, these fucking suck, these are the worst. Right. And I think that in the case with uh, seeing that like stream highlight, and it's not even like it was a viral clip or on his main channel, it's on yeah. the second. But I think just seeing the title and the thumbnail and watching a bit of it, it felt a bit like 
this wasn't super coming from a place of like respect mm -hmm. yeah, for, yeah. for the art. You it's, know what I mean? Yeah, and it's I'm, tricky I'm, for it, you especially, I think, A, because you know and respect Fantano yeah, and like I'm, I'm sure I've and watched like, him since high school I'm like a like fan so there's a you know probably deepest most insular worrying moments about the album what will Fantano think is probably one of the yeah like, and I it took a lot to just put that outside the room because it changes yeah. nothing like when I went in the yeah. booth or whatever it was like whether I had to like in early days like not like abuse alcohol but just get even like a little mm. buzz on or something just to like get you out of that space of like yeah. it's just me i'm just doing this for me and what i like you know i think one maybe credit you should give yourself and um it, it sounds like you've already processed it very well but you you are being very respectful of your your subject matter and the people and peoples you're talking about but I think studios benefit from being kind of decentralized, right? It's not a video called Neil Druckmann is big stinky. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Here's yeah, the things yeah. I don't like or the issues I have with him. Because man, I-, I As an just, artist though, and an independent artist, that's different, yeah, right? It's yeah. jakey. And, I, and I've, I've never like publicly talked about this or anything because it's like, it's, it's the way it goes. I still really respect him. I, I like- I'm just, like I said, I'm still watching the videos. Like yeah. I watched the second channel stuff. I think that he's hilarious, but it's, I think it was just like a, oh damn, like that's, that's what that feels like. And, and it, it, I think yeah. it's, it's the thing of just like, I think especially hearing him talk about it later. And it, it was a big lesson for me of just realizing like, man, you really have to not care what yeah. people think because that's not a good feeling. But I think the fact that, uh, when he talked about it later, he did say some positive things mm -hmm. about specifically the production and that he felt like it was promising and he was interested to see what's next or exactly what he said. I think that was really nice, but that also made it a little bit worse too, because mm -hmm. it's like, well, if you eventually came to this thing, like, why did you, yeah, why did you feel like you had to approach it from this place that maybe wasn't the most professional or like respectful, yeah. you and, know? And I think for to sort of, uh, not to defend him, but more to give you more credit because like one, obviously there's no objectivity to what he's saying or doing, mm -hmm. but then also he's at the end of the day, and I'm a big Fantano fan as well. Um, he's content brand. He's, he's, he's doing content. Right. And, and that's often going to mean, you know, when you're pumping out the amount of content that he is, he's got, and, and I, we don't even know if who's like running the second channel thumbnails and title. Exactly. You know what That's, I mean? That, that was something that I think I realized and was thinking about and made me, and it wasn't even this thing that I was like stressing over for a while, but I'm not going to lie. There was like a day or two after I no, saw dude. it where I was like, damn, because you, you work on this thing for years and obviously you know that I yeah. watched that. And it's like the initial response from friends and family and my own like followers or people that you know care about my shit thank you was so overwhelming when it first came out that it yeah. was like it it was only later that like you know a week or whatever that i saw that that there was a brief moment of like oh man but for the most part i was so like i felt very grateful yeah. and thankful and there was a period of time in uh i guess this would have been middle of last year roundabout um, kind of my brain doesn't work, so I could be wrong. But around middle of last year, uh, it was after a very, the audience knows, but like a, a 2021, 2022, very unpleasant. A lot of me traveling back and forth to mm. uh, the hospital where my mom was. And I hit some weird like emotional saturation point where I wasn't able to cry anymore. And it can be a release, right? Get the get the hormones out of your face. No, I, I get free. that. I have to like watch a Ghibli movie or something. Yeah, yeah. that's got to be some kind of trigger. And I, with with movies and games, I always get locked into analysis mode, and it and it, it takes away the opportunity to really get into it unless I rewatch certain movies. But soundtracks and certain artists can do it for me. And Pine Barrens became. Which, you know, I'd listened to seven, eight months prior or whenever it actually came out. But it was just in my, like, general rotation playlist. And then I was listening to it on the bus back home. 40-minute trip. Shouldn't have listened at the beginning of the trip. And I cried for 40 minutes. Damn. And I, I played it literally once, paused, and then just, like, cried. And then played it again, walked home crying, got home. And I felt literally that was, like, a turning point between the most... 
uh, uh, it being stressful, but emotionally stunted, like not processing anything. And then immediately after just like, you know, problems not solved, but at least showing myself that I had like some, I could evoke some feelings and I won't say more cause I'll just start crying again, but I, thanks yeah. for that record. Thank you, man. Got, got me a little bit <laughs> goofy off. <laughs> <laughs> With projects, though, that's almost like your your. It's it's almost like a a parasite a little bit where, the parasite is waiting. It's waiting desperately for just the right nutrient. Las it's like, <laughs> yeah, you, dude, it's Las Plagas, and you you need to be able to throw a flashbang and instantly kill it. But instead, dude, hoard those flashbangs. Just keeps growing, and then the moment that someone actually does tickle the exact fear that you had, yeah, I don't like the term disproportionate because it is it's a responsive response as sensations valid no matter what right but the the 10,000th comment that happens to be the first negative comment means so much more because you were waiting for it yeah right? you're yeah. anticipating a firework kind of feeling no, I, totally i understand the hesitation around disproportionate but i will say that there's like a not that i know the psychology of it but there's like that thing where it like takes 10 positive things to like outweigh one like mm -hmm. negative thing. Like we, I think it's like a survival instinct or something where we have like a negativity bias because it's like um, a negative, a negative thing might help us survive. Like, Oh, like um, how do I avoid, I need to remember the, the thing, the negative experience I had, I need to remember because avoiding it will help me stay alive in the event of mm -hmm. like, you know, yeah, like maybe it's rooted in some your primal monkey brain. Yeah. Yeah. And so, and I, that, that could be pseudoscience. I don't know, but it's something that resonates with me and resonates with my own experience because like Jordan said, you, in any of my creative outlets, like whenever I see, like, for example, I'll get a text. It's like, Oh, Hassan is watching your video on stream great. I want not, I don't want to hear about it. I don't want to hear, you know, mm -hmm. anything about it. I can't bear to watch someone react to me. I it's valid and I want it to happen. Great. But I don't want to see it because he's going to be eating on stream. He's going to be standing up. He's going to be walking away. He's going to be playing with his dog. Chat's going to get bored. They're going to, and all this stuff is everyone's immune to it or, or no one is immune to it. And it doesn't actually mean anything. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because like in the same, because he's filling time, he's taking a break. He's like doing content. And then in the same breath, like, uh, you know, he'll later reference, I don't think any, like he's ever said anything negative about my videos, but like, I'm always nervous that, I'm going to have something that doesn't keep someone's attention. Mm -hmm. and That's then your it, biggest fear while editing, right? We talk yeah. about you get to the middle of a video and you're like, this is the most boring. Or, no one gives a shit about bonfires. Or like, like my second <laughs> channel is very like impromptu and improvised and like premium. It's, it's premium, but it's not, oh. it's, it's not a, the type of content where I labor over the script because there isn't one oftentimes. And it's not content where I'm laboring over the edit because I'm not usually like I'm watching and giving notes, but I'm not like in the edit for it for hours But that's hours also, and days. that's the whole beauty of the second channel is that it gives you a space to exactly. do that. And that's, you that's do. like what I'm trying to do with mine. Yeah. But that's, but sorry, just to no, real please. quick finish this is like, um, but that there's a vulnerability in that because someone might not see you at your best in your best light. Yeah. If you're like, Oh, I need, someone to watch this with full attention with blah, blah, blah. And you're like, you like, oh, this five second clip is like, uh, may maybe this five second segment is not retaining or you're editing the FromSoft video and you're like, this couple of seconds thing isn't the most bombastic attention grabbing intermediary seconds. Someone's like looking down and eating their golden grams. You know what I mean? And mm. they like completely no, I, missed it. Well, I'll finish a video in the next morning. Like I, I think the age of broken games, like the last one, I finished it while I was with family and it was like no disrespect to them at all. It was super supportive. My dad was like, oh, let's throw it on. Let's watch it. Throw it on. It was exactly that. People were eating, kids were playing yeah. and stuff. And I realized myself I'll put on a video and yeah, I'll be eating my Chipotle and then looking up at my phone or whatever. And it's like, you're listening to it. And so I think at the end of the day, 
I, when I edit my videos, I go through the raw footage and I go through the audio and you trim it down. And a lot of the times I'll just like, I'll watch it to be like, oh, was this take funny? Was I looking at the camera? But a lot of the times I'm just listening to it. And I remember that like, if that's good, you're good. Like right. have the visuals be good. I definitely am a perfectionist with it in some cases. In other cases, it looks like it was made with fucking crayons and that's the beauty of it. But yeah, I, uh, it's really like, I realized most people are just listening a oh, lot of the time. I mean, and, I mean yeah, this is a podcast. You guys know. Like, <laughs> yeah. the, I think there's a, uh, uh, I've never loved the sentiment of, uh, look, I think perfectionism is dangerous. I think perfect is the enemy of the good. Uh, it's a, it's a mode of self oppression. Jedi Sith. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the only thing perfection exists to do is prevent you from doing things. That's all it's there for. It's to iterate and frustrate and perfection never makes you happy because you can't reach it. And, uh, if you think you have, you release it and then you realize you didn't and you regret it. It's, it, yeah. it is what it is, but a, a healthy pursuit of perfection or at least indulging in it a little bit. I think is perfectly healthy if you know that it doesn't matter. Yeah. If you know that it's indulgent. It's if yeah. you That's, know it's a little true. That is yeah. the embodiment of when I do these extensive yeah. little edits mm. is because I know from having gone back and watched my own videos, like, you know, the rock star one or whatever, that I go back and I watch it and I forget that I've done something and I'm on the receiving end and I'm like, did you just put a little guy up there? I'm like, yeah. oh, that was the feeling I was going for when I made yeah. that. So and that's, that that's not, for me. That not being there would not get a bad comment. No, that is like flourish. Most people would not even with. like notice or yeah. care. Yeah. And it's effort to, to like feedback, right? Like the, the record is so much fucking work over such a large amount of time in so many different emotional states, maybe in a way that a, a, a video just couldn't be because it yeah. doesn't ask the same of you. Maybe like, uh, you can't really, it's an, especially since it's an, this is only projecting. I've not made an album, right? But I feel like with an album, you are doing 10 different jigsaw puzzles and then trying to make them one image and put them in the right order that feels right or like runs through a theme or a story. And that is just not the case with a single video. No. Like we, it's not like we make series, like, like uh, if we released one video in between part one and part two of this recent event we're reacting to, it's not as if it like ruins the canon yeah. of the, oh, wait, the seasons out of order. So that's its own no, you're, pressure and it's, it with no right It's definitely outside. the hardest thing I've ever done. Like over, there were moments that were easy. There were moments that were hard, but I think behind it would be like the Naughty Dog video in terms of how long it took me to write that and then record it and then edit it. It's like the longest video I've ever made and just the amount of like research and thought and whatever. I thought that that was like, damn. But the thinking about doing that, because I kind of did it again with this FromSoft video that's pretty chunky. I'm like, okay, this is hard, but I think it's, having done it, you kind of know. Mm -hmm. And so even though the album was like the hardest thing I've ever done and right after it, I was like, I'm never making any fucking music again. This is awful. I think the fact that now I think about making like an EP or something and I'm like, oh, it doesn't sound as hard because I've oh, kind cool. of been through it, you know. Is but, it, is the music real estate kind of taken up by video production stuff right now or do they operate in two different hemispheres yeah, of the Yeah, Dave, brain? I think a big part of it is that the laptop that I made all my music on, like literally blew up <laughs> <laughs> the battery exploded <laughs> and I that's like a beautiful metaphor yeah, yeah. No, it, it was Dude, this, this shit is fire literally fire. it was this razor laptop shout out razor i'm pretty sure it was dude your shit is on fire dude. it was uh it turned i don't know if it turned itself on or if i just forgot to shut it off <laughs> hello in, in, in my backpack a while ago when i was flying here from new york and ever since then it's had a heating issue where I would have to prop it up when I play games because it was a gaming laptop and over time the battery just kept expanding which I think happens on yeah. its own with laptops and eventually I replaced the battery <clears throat> and took the laptop apart and fixed the thermal paste and stuff so it wouldn't overheat anymore but I think it was the replacement battery I got off Amazon that was sus mm. and that's why I'm like this isn't like yo Razor fuck your shit I'm pretty sure I goofied that I had replaced the battery after I finished the album. Cause you I was like, it. Oh, yeah, I golem it. I was like, I'm not going to take this thing apart until the album is done. And then it, it, you know, it was done and I was like staying at my brothers and stuff. And I wanted to just be able to play games more. So I finally took it apart and did it. And I was like, yeah, yeah, I got a new replacement from eBay and this and that. And then I came home after I'd moved here and it had exploded <laughs> in my absence <laughs> and was had like goopy battery 
jizz all over my desk that Dude, was new gamer cum? and it, it got a, it oh. literally was like this gray <laughs> weird the milk it, i could see where it had blasted out because it was like the laptop was like on like one of those stands yeah. that was next to my monitor and it had like fucking back shot <laughs> <laughs> on the back of the monitor in the window so i could see when it exploded like battery fragments whatever and it's like i wasn't there probably could have started a fire thankfully everything was fine but that's so like they shouldn't be able to do that yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that was the laptop that i used machine to make the album oh, which okay. is supposed to be just for like beat sampling and yeah. loops and i did wait it for, for the entire record you're a fucking crazy person. I am. And so it was kind of divine intervention that I, I have a MacBook now, what I, I love and I use for editing and stuff and I have logic on there and I've been meaning to switch, over, <laughs> switch over to logic because I know in the long run, shout it, out logic. It would be so much the better rapper. for the, the workflow. <laughs> so I think it was a com combination of things where now I'm like, okay, I'm ready to like learn that DAW. I'm ready to start. There's a lot of projects that fortunately, were backed up and exported in my Dropbox so I can go back and listen to them. I don't know if I can find like the original projects because they might be on the exploded right, laptop. Right, right. There's somewhere that like laptop might still turn you. on. Yeah. I just haven't tried. I'm scared yeah. to plug it in because yeah, the fair. battery exploded, but I don't know if I plug it in if I mean, I'm going to like, travel. Like the, hurt, <laughs> <laughs> to the Hurt Locker where he pulls and all the bombs are there. Yeah. You just have your laptop covered in goo. I'm just going to leave it. <laughs> it's, it's in like a box in my closet because I didn't want to throw it away because there is stuff on there, yeah, but I also so, also, I don't know if it'd be safe to throw it away. Because you, yeah, I'd say you, keep it in that flammable box. <laughs> in a, in a, in I say, yeah, make sure you get rid of the battery gunk. <laughs> but it's it's a laptop that turns on when it doesn't have a battery in it by plugging it into the wall. Right? Yes. So that's that's the thing you can do. You can also take out the hard drive. I think what I plan to do is to take off the bottom, but because it exploded, it really warped a lot of the screws that were already pretty stripped, the tiny ones to take the case off. So I might just have to like rip the bottom off to get that's the back. <laughs> oh yeah. Um but yeah, so at the music. very <laughs> least at the uh. very least you can um, you know, take the before you even turn the computer on. This could be a thing you do. Just take the hard drive. Take out. the hard drive out. Get a mount for it. Yeah, you know, you I've them. I've done that for the family computer. Back yeah, in the day yeah. And it, then yeah. after that exploded. And then yeah, after that, <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's it's kind of this problem here. that follows me around. <laughs> I, just, I installed native instruments in my family PC. Exploded. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, the Fruity Loop exploded in 2019. Uh, the Serum VST. <laughs> the bass was crazy. Oh man. Well, uh, I think this is a great place to call it for today's episode of sad boys. Jakey, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. Oh. It was a pleasure. So we are going to <laughs> relax on the couch for a special Patreon bonus episode of sad boys, sad boys nights every week, an extra episode of the show for $5. Ooh, I'm lying. You get all the episodes for five dollars. Jordan, Jordan really goes horizontal. Oh, my Jordan gets full horizontal. Oh, We're gonna misalign my spine. Goes the horizontal hokey pokey. <laughs> <laughs> We've been reading uh, public freakout oh, yeah, customer shit. service yeah. stories, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. and uh, we're gonna we we did we did a, a call out. We've got a bunch of those lined up to check out. We're gonna we're gonna laugh. We're gonna cry probably, yeah. and we're gonna relax um, on Sad Boys nights. Um, so that's available on patreon.com slash sad boys. But that about does it for today's episode of Sad Boys. Thanks again to Jakey. Thanks for, for having me. Joining us is a, a fantastic time. And we end every pew, episode pew, of Sad Boys pew, with a particular phrase. We, we love, love you. And we're sorry. Boom. One time some guy came into the store I work at and wanted to buy a pack of beer for five pounds. He handed me a poly pocket full of loose change. The coins were wet with an unknown brown liquid. <laughs> you can't have beer. <laughs> you can't have you know, beer. What, what's actually happening is I, you can't have it. Gucci girl, Gucci girl, how you doing? How you moving girl? Moving girl, how's your day looking? That future girl. Future girl, yeah, we on now. Take my money, go away, all you want it. Guys are rich for me.